Hello. Hey. Hey. Set up for a podcast. I want to tell you who I was uh, podcasting with. Who? Donna. You did? You did Donna today? No, I'm about to. I'm about to take the doggy oh. out and pop with Donna now. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Oh, you're going to have fun with Donna. Yeah, I'm thinking um, I want to thank her. And when she says what for, I'm going to tell her for the past 12 years. What can I do for you, Harvey? I wanted to thank you. For what? For 12 years. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. I love you. Anything you want to plug? All right, all right. No, no, just tell her I love her. <laughs> if I remember. Okay. Uh, bye bye. Bye. See the man I want to stay for you and me. Giving up a piece of pie for you and why. Everybody want to know how it feel. Everybody want to see what it's like. Even me to be high, I don't mind. Me and Missy make a kick, 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 Rick, everyone's been talking about these shows that you've been headlining. Thank you. Yeah, if you want to find out where I'm performing, go to punchup.live slash Rick Glassman. You could even give me your email address and your zip code. So I'll email you no spam when I'm going to be near your city. Now, if you want to find me, I'm going to be in Dallas at the Addison Improv, November 6th, November 7th at the Houston Improv, the Creek and the Cave at in Austin on November 8th. The following weekend, November 15th and 16th, I'll be in Seattle, Washington at Laughs Comedy Club. And January 8th, I will be in San Diego at uh, American Comedy Club. If you want to check out those shows, <laughs> you might want to get in line literally and figuratively because they are a hot ticket right now. Hot. This episode is sponsored by Helix Sleep. Now, Allie, you look very tired. Why do you think that is? Well... Rick, I don't have a Helix mattress. What are you sleeping on? I'm sleeping on a cardboard. You know what? I don't want to even promote the competition. If you're interested in having a fantastic night's sleep with a money-back guarantee with a mattress delivered to your door, go to helixsleep.com slash Tyso to get 20% off all mattress orders. That's 20% off all mattress orders at helixsleep.com slash Tyso. So I said to you when we were coming in, I said this thing. Oh, uh, that you said that I'm tall and handsome. You're I told you to save it for the podcast. You're tall and handsome. I'm not saving it. Will you? Um, we're now recording. Can I just? Try I have a. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. No, no. Yes. Uh, Respect. Just on this stuff. Space. Okay, so sit there. Yeah. Okay. And uh, hi. Sit here. Anywhere on the blow. Well, you're gonna be over here because I need. Can to I have this. like the corner? Like cozy you. in the corner. Oh, what are you doing there? Oh, he's being my friend. He's being my emotional support. Podcast. Oh, man. Gosh, he's Dad, I'm sure you hear this all the time. Mm -hmm. I am, I'm, I just finished my second rewatch and I was watching again. I watch love. <laughs> and I'm not one of these guys that just found out about it when it came on Netflix. Can I do that? Oh, I can't no do way. that. I'm so Although, sorry. I am so embarrassed. This is new. No, it's borrowed. For press? It was borrowed for, we were trying it on for press and I do ran out the door camera? and I grabbed it. I, sure, whatever, yeah. No, I grabbed it. Isn't it cool? It's I don't own that. Can I get you something else to drink? No, this is great. I got this you know one, what I could maybe use as a drink fridge? No, you do not. Look at this. Little options. Wow. I just got it. Pretty cool. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm want... gonna look. Can I? Can I? Yeah. Can I touch it? Frost yourself. I just want to see what's in here. Like this is. This paper is... towel or, or toilet paper? I don't have tissues. Um, toilet paper or paper towel are both fine. Ooh, I yeah. like this. A sparkling peach situation. You going for one? Yeah. And That's what's fun. You think you don't want to drink, but then you look at the display. Well, can we talk about that you have squirt? Yeah, I have my, uh, my, uh, I don't really drink soda, but I did separate darks and lights. What? Do you want me to do this? I wiped them. They're, 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 they're wiped. They're wiped before they went in. Pre-wiped? You're my guest! Oh my god, you pre-wiped the sodas. I have a lot to learn from you. 
Well, really do. get ready, because I'm going to do all the talking. <laughs> okay, good. But hold on, let me talk to you in a second. Okay. Just give me a break. Sorry. Oh, do that. I have stuff. stuff. Do this. Now, do now that you're part of the podcast game. What? Gotta... I don't know this stuff. Yeah, but uh, don't let I have, them know. I have people for that. That bring your microphone to you? <laughs> Are you? It suits that successfully? You're a mic guy? Hi. Mm-hmm. Oh, kisses. Kisses. Hi, friend. I don't think this is good for you. I don't think it's good for you. I don't know. I don't know either. I'm still learning the rules. I don't, don't give them much. Mmm. That's a refreshing taste sensation. Well, welcome to Take Your Shoes Off. Theme music. Scoot doo. Blabbity blue. Scoop dee. Oh, yeah. Okay, good song. Are we back? <laughs> We're back. Oh, amazing. Um, Can I just ask you where to put my drink that is most comfortable? Okay, great. Yeah, but that's going to be a pain in the ass for you. Right? No, it's not. Hold on. Right now, we just need to know what works for Alvin. Everything works for Alvin. If and I could who just pick up speaking? some of Alvin's demeanor, I would be so good. Oh, yeah, me too. I hear you. That, like, yeah. presence. Yeah, that, like, oh, there's food. Joy. Oh, there's, some, there's somebody to say hello to. They, and they know how to bask. Bask. The dogs bask. I know basking in the sun. I don't know it other ways. Just like like you bask in the sun, like bask in any of it. Bask in your friendship. Bask in your bathtub. Bask in whatever moment. Bask, bask with your dog. A bask tub. A bask tub. That's what I'm going to call it tonight when I get in it. Nice. How you doing, bask tub? Nice to see you again. You know, I, I, we, when we first met moments ago, I was basking in the sun and complaining about it. Oh, yeah. How, how What's the situation with the sun for you? When... If I allow my sun and dirt are a similar thing to me where like, I'm not afraid of it. I love it. I, I, I want it when I want it. If I'm going to go work out or get sweaty or get dirty or get whatever, I'm fine. But when I know I'm recording or something or I'm not doing that stuff and I don't want to break a sweat, it's not just the sweat that bothers me. It's the fear that it's going to start happening. Uh-huh. And like I'm out there and like I'm standing under a tree. Yeah, like the anticipation of the thing that you are trying to avoid. Because once you start sweating, which I did, now it's going to take me 10, 20 minutes. Wait a second, that anticipation thing? What happens when that happens to you on stage? It doesn't happen on stage. It doesn't because you get in a zone so easily? No, it's just, hello? Let me hear you real quick. Hi. Bring, bring this, let me, oh, bring hello. this. Hello, hi. Bring it like to, like, if I, can I say boobs? You can Bring say it boobs. to boobs a bit and then up a little, so like, perfect. This, oh, he... You said boobs and he ran away from me. Call him. Alvin. Yeah, Alvin. Alvin. Oh. <laughs> Good boy. Alvin. All right, so what are we talking about now? <clears throat> oh, anxiety. <clears throat> uh, I get anxious or nervous before going on stage often, but like I know that that's what's supposed to happen. Yeah. So it doesn't chemically affect me the same way. Right, right, You know, it's right, just right. like, oh, that thing is happening where I'm tired or shaking or cold. Okay. And then I go on stage and it goes away goes away. Yeah, because, well, do you feel this way? I mean, you've been doing this for I'm a while. I'm not a comedian. But, yeah, like, your job is the stuff? scariest thing to me. The idea of your job is the scariest idea. You don't get scared on sets? No, I do. I get I get nervous on sets, but you know what? You can do it again. I'm sorry. You can redo it. Okay. You can, sorry. I'm happy. <clears throat> yeah, you can redo it uh, on stage. Oh, you can? Yeah, if I say something, I'll be like, how do I do that again? And then everyone's like, what are you talking about? And then they don't keep buying tickets, but you could do it. <laughs> and I do. That's why I do so much editing. He's, he's a. Uh, oh, okay. It's his now. Yeah. Yeah. You want another one? No, I'm good. <laughs> totally good. I love him. Me too. I love him so much. Um, all right. I just got like, I feel like I just drank coffee and I didn't. Like, uh-huh. um, I want to not talk too much up top. I want to first say hello. Hi. So nice to meet you. Thank you so much for inviting me to your home and onto yeah. your podcast, mm-hmm. onto your Cool Kids podcast. Is this Cool Kids podcast? Oh my gosh. So Patrick, I was on the phone with Patrick yesterday and he was like, what are you doing tomorrow? And I said, I'm going on Rick Glassman's. And he was like, what? That's for the Cool Kids. And I was like, what am I doing there, Patrick? And wow. he's like, I don't know. What am I doing here, Rick? Wow, he is smart. Yeah. Um, he and uh, my uh, one of my best friends, Adam Ray, are good buddies. Oh. I don't know if they're good buddies, but I know they they went to college together or okay, something. USC. And they, they've podcasted with each other. Um, that was a bit ago before you guys had Let's Not Bury the Lead. Sidebar, our new podcast that launched yesterday. 
just on what? It's Sirius XM. It's wherever you get your podcasts. Right. Every Tuesday. Not wherever you get your podcasts. It's not. Do you know where most people are getting their podcasts now? Where? YouTube. On YouTube? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why is that? So people who listen to podcasts could listen on any of the audio platforms or, or YouTube. There are people that will listen on either. And then there's people that don't listen to podcasts. They just watch YouTube stuff. And if it's not on YouTube, they're not going to watch it. I had, I'm not going to call it an argument because I don't think he cared enough. But uh, do you know Armchair Expert? Yes, Dax. For years, I was saying, get on YouTube, get on YouTube. And he didn't want to, for reasons that I guess I understand. A lot of people get self-conscious on camera. They can't be as intimate, et cetera. But you guys aren't guest dependent, right? Uh, no. It's just you two. I, in almost every episode, I get more on YouTube than audio. And I think you guys should do it because people were used to watching you guys. You're right, a TV show. Right. People binge that. They want to watch stuff. To go on your phone, you have to be like a big fan. Like, oh, their episode came out. I want to see it. And then they'll listen. But for people that don't know you exist or forget, and then it pops up on the YouTube algorithm and they're like, oh, I want to give this a go. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Gold, gold, okay. Gold, gold. Lesson learned. So that's the first. Uh, first thing of I all, to my tell lessons. You. First of my lessons. Well, you were, we were going to talk about the pause, the dog pause, the entryway, the wiping. It's so good. We can't start so with that. Okay. Because that's me talking. Oh. I can't. I talk so much, and I'm already feeling how much I want to talk to you. Uh, I'm so here. Can we just do that? Yeah, we, it, it's inevitable. So let me get a little bit of you talking. <laughs> about something. Let me ask you a couple little questions okay. and then you don't even have to be here. I'm going to talk about my germs and my dog and I'll handle it. <laughs> but uh, Suits comes back. I've talked about Suits so much on this podcast. You have? So much. Okay. Um, actually, what about college? Did you, did you go to college? I did. Where'd you go? Get him. Get him. Say I just, I'm just wondering. Say it. I'm I just trying to get a geographical background on Rick. I went to Harvard. Did you? Yeah. Oh, congratulations. I graduated from Harvard Law. And didn't pass the bar, but that's because I never took the bar. You you went to Harvard Law. I've been watching a lot of Suits recently, and I can't stand that that fuck pretended that he went to Harvard. But I don't want to get into it. Okay, uh, why don't you have a uh, like put your diploma up or something so that we know you're not um, full so of I shit. So I used to uh, I stopped talking about it in my act because uh, I used to make a whole thing about how people will always talk about it, uh, and it became a little self fulfilling. Okay, and then people like people call, still call me Harvard, and I fucking hate it. I'm just, my nickname for you is Harvard Dick. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call you from now on. Don't. Harvard Dick. Look how upset he is. Look how upset he is. I absolutely would have believed you went to Harvard. I don't think, I think maybe Sarah would, but I don't think Donna would. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you can't pull the wool over Donna's eyes. So let me ask you this, and I mean, uh, maybe I'm prying. Um, how much do you weigh? <laughs> no, no. Uh, I don't know. So, I don't weigh myself. So Donna, uh, really ever? No. I don't either. No, when I was when I was pregnant, I backed onto I was like beep 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 beep, and I would back onto the scale with the nurse every time I had to do like that beginning of the thing. You I was went like beep beep beep. I would say beep 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 like I was backing my truck up, and I would get on the scale backwards, and I'd be like, "Don't tell me, I don't need to know." But you have a baby in you. That's not like I know, but you know what? We don't need. To, it's not. It's not. It's not something I need to be thinking about. Well, uh, it was guess not how be much useful. you think and comment. No, I'm just <laughs> Could I you imagine that would be so? Um, that would be so. Wait, what we just talked? Oh, Awful right. So Donna, reason. this idea that Donna, you can't get anything past Donna. They find this. This isn't a character trait from season one or two. I don't even think. Do you remember when they found it and your thoughts on it? The Donna knows everything. I think it was in a flashback early on that she does her Donna thing where she reads Harvey. I feel like the first moment of it is when we see them at the DA's office and she's got her snap on Lego bags on and Harvey comes in and she's snap like snap on with those that's because they were extensions of the bangs yeah I had fake bangs Makes in to, to like be a flashback um <clears throat> and they make everything a little bit more yellow they make it yeah they sort of have a filter I think she does this she has this ability to like uh, see that his t tie is crooked or something like that and be like, that means da 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 da, -da. Oh, right. boom. And then read it. It's kind of like a strange superhero kind but of But that move. becomes a big part of Donna. Yeah. And it wasn't before. So this question is about suits, but it's also like television and like character development. I find that like when writers find 
I say find because it wasn't part of it. They find something. Oh, we can now make stuff like this. And I hypothesize that, I mean, your character is already one of the main characters, but when they found that, it gave you so many more, I, I think, that's what I felt, more stories and like that one little thing, oh, Don is able to do this, now they insert you in everything. And I think that, it. did you feel that? Am I making that up? Did no, you I totally that? hear exactly what you're saying and I have a story that sort of speaks to this. So Donna- in Hold on, the, let me tell you about the pause. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So Donna, um, Donna is a guest in the pilot, in the pilot episode, because the whole thing was that I uh, was doing an, I don't know if you know this, but Gabriel sent me the script because Gabriel and I were friends in 1993 and he was already signed on to do the show. Gabriel is Harvey. Yes, he plays yeah. Harvey. Um, and so he sent this to me and he said, this part is really small in the pilot, but I really think that you should audition for it. Please, please make this happen. It's going to become a great part. I'm sure it's going to become a great part. So when I did the pilot, even like my managers and agents were like, what are you doing? Like flying to New York? Why are you going to do that? What, like guest you, spot on Were a you pilot? so busy? No. I mean, was I so busy? Yeah. Well, then no. why wouldn't you do well, it? Well, exactly. Right. I mean, I Agents was like. Agents and managers, when they advise people, like everybody is this superstar that they can't do commercials, which isn't even a thing, mm -mm. blows my mind. Mm -mm. But anyway. Yes. So I do remember the manager at the time being like, so wait, you're going to go to New York for two weeks and be there and shoot this pilot and take yourself out of the mix i was like um <laughs> yeah take yourself out of the mix yeah what mix exactly what does that mean if you have an and audition you'll audition exactly and also everything was always for me at the stage of that i was in in my career was like something's gotta give the running it up the flagpole do a pilot test a million times for mm -hmm. pilots during pilot season which was a thing that we used to have sure sometimes i'm booking a pilot sometimes i'm not it, the pilots don't get picked up. Like for people, we've got to go a different way. I like way. letting people in that yeah. don't know. It's still kind of like this, but a lot of, you know, audition, you try to get a pilot. If you're lucky enough to do that, then you're locked into that. You don't audition for anything else. And then you have to wait to see if that show gets picked up or not. So there is kind of like exclusivity of what jobs you want to take and strategy with that. I just want to let people in on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, let's see, where was I? Oh, go to New so, York. So my team was like, really, you want to do that? And I said, look, I just, I'm excited about this. The way that we're doing this is not really quote unquote worked. I believe in showing up, but most importantly, this is a big moment for my friend. He, this is a big moment in his career. And if nothing else, I just get to be there and support him and celebrate it with him. And then they were like, Very oh, you Donna. should totally go do it. And, um, <clears throat> and so Donna was going to be maybe a recurring character, but then, you know, we've done the pilot the show gets picked up, I'm maybe going to go do something else. So then they made me a series regular before we went into episode two. And they so, felt that, that they did that because you were maybe going to do something else? Yes, I was going to be busy. So, with something yeah, else. And if you weren't maybe going to be doing something else, then they would just figure it, take their time with you and maybe give you some episodes until they figure it out. And save save the series regular money probably. Yeah. Is ultimately. What, like, oh, what it is. We, can't, we might not be able to have her. Oh, I want her. Well, isn't well, that didn't you life? Want her? But isn't that life? No. It's not. I don't think so. I like you. Say more. I like well, that you are that rejecting life? that. Do you have I, an example of another time in your life that that? It just feels like this business, right? I don't consider life to be this this business. Okay, yeah. Um. But yeah, I guess it 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 is. I mean, it's it's high school. Whether you're in high school or this business is high school or podcasting is kind of like that. Like, there's the popular people, and if they're wanted, I want them. There's a toxic behavior, I think, for young girls and young women that now that I'm in the middle of my life, I want to go back and say, don't do the thing where you like the guy more because he seems unavailable Most to you. Most of my audience is like between 20 and 30 year old gorgeous women. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> tell them. I know they're beautiful. <laughs> tell them. Ladies. Yeah. Don't do that thing. Don't do that thing. Um Anyway, who am I to give anybody advice? But back to the Donna piece. Yes, she was not going well, don't, to don't necessarily. Don't go past that. Tell okay. say more. Like, what do you mean? Like, you're saying if a guy doesn't want you, what, what are you saying? I'm saying that there can be this, like, t toxic thing where you need to get picked by the person who's not picking you. It's about just wanting to be picked for the kickball game. Like this, pick me, pick me, pick me. Mm -hmm. I want to say... I. Do you pick them? 
Like, why are we just trying to get picked instead of like use your picker, right? Well, sure. <laughs> Does that make any sense? Yeah, to but you? That, that's that's on women. I would love. I actually do a bit about about that, like how like it's the guy's job to court and show you that I'm interested. The guy's supposed to go in for a first kiss if you go both want to kiss. There's like this unwritten rule of the guy is, which like it shows that he could protect you or something. I don't really understand it. Um, but like, how cool would it be if like a girl's like, hey, do you want to like let me like go out with me? And then it'd be so much easier. I think that's happening, right? Like we're coming at this from a very heteronormative, like. Well, that's thing, the main one, and right? I'm going to say it. <laughs> okay, but Everyone I do think times are straight. changing. Like this is a really fun time for me to be like kind of in the middle, looking back, going like, How "That's old are changing." Your daughters? Sixteen and twelve. So, and I'm on a TV show where I play the mom of a ton of boys, and I don't have a lot of boys in my life. So it is such a joy to be on that show with these actors, these young actors. Um, who I'm like, wow, you gentlemen of this generation are delightful and just, I have so much to learn from them. I don't do much so research, great. so pardon me. I don't no, want to no, just no. go past it. What's that show? Um, it's a show called My Life with the Walter Boys. It's a teen drama, that uh, a teen show that's on Netflix. And nice. it's really fun to just like play the mom. It's a show about the kids. And it's just such a pleasure to be around them. It's, it's so, this is a great thing about the business is that we are in community when we are doing it and it, there's always this expansion of meeting new people and having new experiences and to hang out with people in that generation. <laughs> sure. I'm like a million years old when I say that. Are they your but kids age or are they older? They're The actors themselves are playing my kids age, but right. they are but older. my age. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know well, how old you I, are. I just, just higher under 18. It always takes me out. I mean, I don't know your show. I haven't seen it, but like mm -hmm. when I'm seeing these 24 year olds in high school, it's like, you're not. Right, 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 right. But right. I guess that's because I um like there's all these rules yeah. about like hours and how long they can work and having the tutors and yeah. and we do have some people who are under 18 also, some actors who are under 18 and that's just kind of a different kind of schedule that we have to be on with them. Yeah. So you guest star on your friend's show. Yeah. Shout out to Gabriel. Thank you for offering it. Yeah, right? It's really sweet. Very nice. Amazing. Doesn't happen much. And I always had been saying, like, it doesn't always have to happen the way that we said, like, you audition for a thing, then you test for the thing, then you do the thing, then it gets picked up. There's many ways. There are many paths. Um, I've had three shows Ooh. that I was, like, a lead on. And uh, two of them were very, like... One I met, I met the showrunner and started playing basketball with them. One is they saw me on something else and asked me. And only one was an audition. There's I, maybe even other smaller stuff. I've I think I've only auditioned. Not that I've done that many things. If I've done twelve things, I've auditioned for two of them, and wow. everything else is just like wow, yeah, that stuff. So yeah, I agree with that. And like when like your friends on something and they say to audition for it, and like you know that they like what they're doing. Why would even if it was just a guest star? Why would you not want to do yeah fun stuff? I started doing background work. I met my best friend on background of Angels and Demons, the uh, Da Vinci Code sequel. Oh my gosh! And I would do background work a lot. And then when I started working a little bit, I still loved it. There's something nostalgic and funny and fun about it. And I would for a, and I still ask sometimes. But like when my friends are doing stuff, I want to do back. I like let me be on set with you guys and eat with you guys. And I have a little background reel. So oh like oh my gosh, I just love being on sets and doing stuff. Being a, it's a magical place. Mm -hmm. We're really, really lucky. I th I do, I think about that all the time and the conversations that you're having when you're just like waiting for the scene to be lit and the things that you learn. It's amazing. It's an amazing, amazing job because you know what? You never feel like you're done. There's never gonna be a time. Can you imagine a time in your life where you're gonna be like, and I'm done with that. Done with it, you mean like retiring like I, of? I like did it, I crushed it, I got to the, I got to the end. And Ellen DeGeneres just said that she's putting out her last special. Oh, okay. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry to, sorry to call you out about that. No, I mean, I think like working in storytelling, like are we ever going to be done telling? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, it's tough out there to get another job. I'll tell you that. I mean, I, we can totally go down that rabbit hole, like of what's happening to the business. But I feel like that's going to be such a downer, and you're, all those like hot women who listen to your podcast are not going to be interested necessarily. It's weird, and this is like maybe going to make me look like what I have to say isn't interesting. But whatever I say, they just gobble it up. <laughs> <sighs> they just want me to pick them, and I'm like, I'm busy. <laughs> but the uh, uh, so the suit stuff that's coming back, there, there's like 
a new suits, right? Or is it a spin-off yeah. thing? You're not part of it. No, it's a it's like the expansion of the universe. Right, like what the office is doing. Oh, the office is doing that? I think Greg Daniels is part of it, I think. But okay. the original cast is not. Do you notice that I live in a barn? Like everything you've referenced, I've been like, huh? I live a little bit in a barn. When Greg people Daniels. are now, I don't want to success is relative and I don't even know what that means to me, let alone you in this broad of a term. But you, you know, you came in in the black car, the manager that you're, you're <laughs> it's press day. You know, you got the big glasses. I'm on this show. We're doing this stuff. The level of success. Those people usually be like, I don't know what anything is. No, that's not what it is. With me. On TikTok, there, uh, Mandy Patinkin, you know, Mandy Patinkin. Yeah, I know okay. Mandy Patinkin. Mia Montoya. Uh, he's his son or daughter or both or whatever. They've been going viral a lot. Do you follow any of them? Yes, I do. And they, he knows they know nothing. Yeah, yeah. And it's so much fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They like don't even know the music from like Jurassic Park or whatever. I would say I don't know anything because I'm not the cool kid that's usually on your podcast. I don't know what I'm doing here, Rick Glassman. Well, I'm just like, what a nice gentleman to invite I me on this cool I can tell you're not. Thing. Look at where you're talking. What? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew you were going to well, regret it. What you're doing here is you're... Uh, one of the stars of one of my favorite shows, you're starting or now had just started a podcast, Sidebar, and uh, I am taking advantage of you promoting your podcast. So that's how I feel like I have you over here. And I would do this with you all the time. I have so many questions and we're going to get into them probably, but just meeting you is, so, I, I love Suits and you're so good in it. Oh, thank you. And, thank you. Thank um, you. So nice. oh, my eyes watering my eyes are, sometimes when I like get sincere and give a compliment my eyes water is that true that's yeah. amazing that's beautiful um, thanks that's a really beautiful you thing. do a cry acting in the show um I happen to do a bit of a cry acting I do cry acting which we kind of did before I could get I need five seconds of silence and I could get tears it's weird when you're counting I know I could do it and I could show it to you and look at my Instagram I do it all the time that's something I could do and uh when I saw you do that, I thought to myself, oh, that's a, at the time I didn't know your name. I do now, of course. But like, oh, that, I remember saying like, oh, that's the actress wanted to do that. Was I right? Or did they ask you to do that? I think that was written in. Okay, okay, wait. Now I'm starting to figure something out here, Rick. Originally, you asked me a question that I never got back to. So we have a hanging chad on that, which was you were saying, did they write that in? There was a the previous question was about about, about Donna being like a, the knowing everything. Thing. Yeah. And when did they once they figured that out, that was a path that they could take a thing that was very interesting that happened in the first season, which was the point I was going to try to make was that we were like on the sixth or seventh episode when they plugged in, made us do a standalone scene that they plugged into like the second or third episode where Don Donna cries in front of Lewis and Lewis runs away. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that moment where she's, yeah. she's I, like, I, you like make Mike, me I feel cheap. Everything. Oh, you remember everything? No, but I'm good. Okay, okay, you're good at that. So she says you basically, uh, Lewis wants to borrow Donna from Harvey. Gross. Mm -hmm. um, and then she's like, you're making me feel- spoiler alert. <laughs> you're making me feel cheap. And he gets like all panicked and he's like, oh no. And she pretends to cry and then he runs away. And yeah. that was a whole game that she was gonna do. So they wrote that later and put it back in. So to speak to what you're saying, I feel like after they had watched enough dailies or been on set enough, they figured out a dynamic that they wanted to put in and they had the luxury of being able to paste mm -hmm. it back into an earlier scene so that they could have that dynamic earlier. So they set up this bit of her playing with people, being able to mess with Lewis, and then they set up her kind of always knowing everything by being on the intercom. And then uh -huh. and then that turned into her just always knowing people and being able to read people. Yeah. So they developed it in that kind of way and, and had the luxury of being able to have already have episodes in the can and go back and do it. And that's why I felt so lucky because my part, because Don is a small part in the beginning, but they kept kind of mm -hmm. boosting it forward. Part of that was Gabriel boosting it forward, our director, How did the Gabriel writers. Boost it forward? What does that mean? I, when we were doing the pilot, um, and I talk about this on our podcast, when I watched it, I remembered, I didn't remember at all until I was actually seeing the scenes and I was like, oh, that line wasn't in there. Or Donna was supposed to be on the intercom, but Kevin Bray, our director, and Gabriel were like, you should come be in this scene. You're here today. Be in this scene with Mike. I'll be signing documents. You can hand the card over to him instead of me handing the card. They just found ways to kind of fold her in and 
maybe inadvertently were making her uh, an indispensable part of Harvey's life. Mm -hmm. And I think that I was really lucky to have that. I think that the, them, you being in on things because the intercom, that's that makes so much sense. And then seeing the value of like her knowing stuff in the shorthand, then like how do we do that more? I, that's a great point and a great find. Um, then you said something else. Oh yeah, so the the crying and the bringing that in, uh, making you an actress. That also like during the mock trial, like oh, yeah. that you were starting doing that. And then you know you also do the Shakespeare and stuff. Do they see you, the actress, as an actress and wanting to play that game and adding that in? Because I could also tell, like, they do a lot of movie quotes and references, and it's a relatively meta show. With Like, you could see the writers having fun with that kind of stuff. So maybe they just are thinking about actresses, or they've seen some of your work or something and wanted you to be an actress. Do you remember how that came about? Um, I don't remember. And, you know, that's a question that I think I will ask Aaron. So thank you for <laughs> bringing that up. I think... Uh, I think they knew they had the mock trial and they just saw it as an opportunity to to make Donna have more of a personality. Um, maybe it's because I'm the most accuracy one of us. Like, what does that mean? unfortunately, like the most like into sure. craft. So, I mean, I am a, I'm a theater nerd. I love going to the theater. I love Shakespeare. I I mean, just yesterday, somebody was making my husband was making fun of me. He was just like, and she just quoted Shakespeare. Like, I am. See, I'm not cool. I am not I'm going cool. to, I'm going to DC specifically to see my friend uh, David Finn shout out to David um, uh, uh, an English actor friend of mine who is in the states doing uh, at the Shakespeare Theater um, Comedy of Errors. Oh, that'll be so So I'm going to go go to watch that. I just love that. So I think they they did sort of zoom in on parts of us. Like, for example, Rick Hoffman is a huge sports fan, knows everything about sports. So they made his character know nothing about sports and be really into the ballet. I just saw him. I rewatched uh, uh, the day after tomorrow. I don't know if you remember that movie. I don't. Two thousand four. I'm making it up, but fact check me. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and uh, Emmy Rossum and uh, what's his name? Uh, the world's ending. Okay. Uh, and he has a small role in it where he's like a Wall Street jerk off. You know, has money and. Um, so he was brilliant. He was good in it, yeah. but I didn't remember him because I didn't. And then I had since seen Suits, and it was just like. It's funny, like I have friends that are, um, I was fans of before I met him. Some I've, I'm fans of as we've gotten blah, 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 blah. And like, but when I see somebody, like when I, when I see Rick in that movie, I'm like, oh, oh, you know, it's like, yeah, people do stuff. But like, you have this impression. I have this impression sometimes. I know it's not, not real, but like somebody's thing is where I found them. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean, yeah, yeah. and then to see him younger and from before, and then like, wow, you, I wonder if he got suits because of this, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's good. He is amazing. It is such a treat to be going back and watching it and seeing how on the very first day he showed up with that character fully formed. I mean, he like slithered in. Uh -huh. It it really he he has like an Alan Rickman thing in time at oh, moments. Man, oh, I can't remember who Alan Rickman is, but I know when I look, Alan Rickman. Not loading. I love your little mouth and your little tiny teeth. Your little little mouth and your little tiny teeth. I do too so much and, and I sleep so well with him and it's part because of him and it's part because of this episode is sponsored by Helix Mattress. Now listen, I've been talking about this mattress for a while and the reason I've been doing it is because I got the energy to do it because honey, I have a great night's sleep on it. Not only do I sleep on it, my parents have one. My cousin my cousin Teddy has one. My aunt has one. And I've been getting, uh, I've been getting messages from a, a lot of fans recently who have been telling me that when they touch themselves watching my act, they're doing it on a Helix mattress. I gotta get myself a Helix mattress. I've been sleeping under a rock, and under that rock, there's no Helix mattress. And you can get 20% off all mattress orders at helixsleep.com slash Tyso. That's 20% off all mattress orders at, that's right, helixsleep.com slash Tyso. They have a, they have a 100 day warranty. Now, they don't want me telling my audience this, but the truth is it's money back, guaranteed. Get the mattress, use it for three months, send it back. They drop it off at your door. It's this crazy loophole that I don't know how Helix, uh, if people take advantage of this, where you could just four times a year get a mattress, get a different one, get a different one, get a different one, and it's free. 
Now, I don't advise doing that because, you know, it's it's wasteful. But technically, you can. And you probably won't even need to because as soon as you get your butt on one of those Helix mattresses, you're never going to want to get well, off. Well, truth be told, yeah, it's a fantastic mattress. I tell you that my family has them for that reason. It's a great mattress. If you're not in the market for a mattress, then don't don't go in fact if even if you're not in the market for, market for mattress still go to helixsleep.com slash so i think it makes like it look good to all the keep advertising but if you are in the process but also just do it and if you did it let me know in the comments say i went to helixsleep.com slash tyso and then if you bought something also say that i'm just kind of curious yeah uh i think that's about it sweet dreams well i'm gonna go back to uh donna i'm sorry i keep doing that sarah <laughs> sorry how do i know alan rickman harry potter um Tr truly madly deeply uh um who is he in harry potter i i he's what's his face he, you, this is embarrassing I, yeah this is one of the things that you should know right no it's my brain um oh yeah him yeah that guy what's his name in harry potter uh i didn't watch harry potter um i'm uh I don't he, know, robin hood he was that yeah I mean, that's yeah. what i think of robin hood um love actually die hard love actually what? alan rickman and love actually and emma thompson oh my god alan rickman uh harry potter just feel like people are like yelling he's, at he's at me. the he's the yucky um he's like Severus Severus snape 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 he is snape snape is that the name great I've only, I, I want really you to call me Siri the rest of this time, you know, because I'm I always have lots of facts. You're the guy who remembers things. I'm the one who can't pull them up. I don't really remember that much. I just know some things. Mm. Um, so he something uh, else that 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 uh, Rick and you both do um, is uh, oh, I'm guessing you guys uh, worked on your walks. <laughs> Am I right? Because the walking I see you guys doing. I think the walk worked on me. <laughs> you don't I think, think it worked for him? It. No, I'm saying it worked on me. Yes, it worked for him. Wait, what do you mean it worked on you? You said you worked on your walk, and uh -huh. I'm saying that wor walk worked on me. It's it very literally poetic. literally changed me. It did. Tell me what that means. So, the, okay, so. Uh, Put up some walking, uh, in picture in picture. <laughs> that that walk was a necessity. Okay, first of all, my upper body is really long, so that's why you're doing that gesture with like your arms. Like I can use my arms to like propel me through space because my legs aren't actually that long. Um, but at first, but I think naturally, like I played lacrosse in high school and uh -huh. college, so I naturally kind of move like that, right? Like, do you, are you? Anyway. I don't know. I didn't see you walking like that when I met you. Okay, so all I was gonna say about the walk was that the clothes made me walk like that. The, the heels, the dresses, the, the stuff, you're, the undergarments that you're wearing in order to fit into those dresses, like all that created the walk. And then we did some walk and talks and I had to keep up A lot of with the talks. people, like with the gentlemen that I was walking with who were walking in flats. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you just, just kind of had to move in a certain way. But it was the clothes that I was like, this, this lady, like... I mean, if you're wearing a two thousand dollar dress and you're walking in the hall, like yeah, the dress budget on that show had to have been insane. Insane, like you know that that dress is walking you. Like who buys that? Like who do, Who has twenty five of these in their closet? Like these kinds of clothes. I'm gonna cough. Hold on a second, sorry. Sure. Um, <coughs> just to be clear, uh, the, the observation is uh, uh, on how much I noticed it. It was like very sexy walk. Like I'm not like making fun of it. It was just like. It, it got to the point to where like went and, and Rick too in a different way. Rick wasn't sexy as much, but like, it was like I've rewound walks because I'm like, I'm just gonna be candid with you sometimes in a, in a fun judgmental way. I'm like, she's not walking that sexy when it's like, when it's something like this, but like to keep up thing. But I was wondering like, do you have to watch it and practice it? I've practiced walks. I can't get a good walk. I don't have a bad walk, but like it's a walk where it's just like, well, have you ever walked in heels? Have you ever tried to walk in heels? Probably. Probably? Probably. It's it's a whole different gait situation, right? Like the <laughs> like specifics of how you have to move. And I, your posture, it's perfect. Oh. Well, I thanks. guess what I'm asking is, are you aware of it in the moment? Is this character somebody who walks like this? Or is it something where it's like, I look good when I walk like this. You know Where what I mean? did it come from? Yeah. I, it was not a conscious choice. This is a great question. And this is the first time I'm thinking about it. I did not practice it at home. I do practice a lot of things at home that I did not <laughs> practice at home. That I think came, it definitely, 
I mean, I do remember, especially in the first season, there were dresses that like I couldn't even sit in. They were so tight and, you know, they just made me probably sit up straight. And yeah, perfect have you posture. ever worn Spanx? Are you a big Spanx wearer? I, have, I don't think I have. Okay. So Spanx I, is, well, I mean, could be anywhere, but you're talking mostly. It's like a, it's the, like short, it's like a girdle. I've worn compression shorts. Okay. But so, never, never above the waist. So, okay. So it's like a girdle that comes in on, right yeah. under your boobs. And that you kind of have to sit up and straight in. Um, yeah, I think it was the clothes did that, but that was always how I was as an actor, which was like I was a th theater nerd, as I mentioned, and I kind of never totally knew what my character was until I had a fitting. And then I was like, oh. Hmm. And so once the fitting would happen and you'd have and the shoes, I'd always be like, can I can I use the shoes in rehearsal or shoes like them in mm -hmm. rehearsal? Or can I have like a crinoline that I rehearse in? Whatever, if you're doing a period thing. So I think all that theater nerd stuff happened when I got to Donna. And I remember it was season two. And I remember this really clearly because it was after Donna got fired. And then she waltzes back into the office. And it might be what you're referencing because they intercut between Lewis walking and Donna walking back. And uh the, the Lewis walking burn, is its baby, own burn. thing. Okay. Uh, the Lewis walking, it's big. And for whatever reason, it works so well. It's like, and also like he'll, he'll walk. I can't really do it. I, I can't picture it right now enough to even try. But like he, tur he like his head is the wrong oh, way. Oh, this. He's doing, he's, it's so, it's so big. It and the, was the, there on the first day that he was there he was transformed it's i mean so Rick, specific this it was so it's so incredible to rewatch the pilot in the first episode and be like rick hoffman showed up yeah he, he, he would he smashed whole, the pilot i mean it's unbelievable mm -hmm. there's a scene where it's the scene where lewis finds out that harvey got the promotion and Jessica's like, this is just how it is. And he's just kind of sitting there like, and they're giving each other shit and he just sort of slithers out. He always kind of does the opposite choice. Like he could have yelled, but instead he got mm. really quiet. Like he's just so brilliant. It's it's crazy how likable a, you, a, you hate him. I hate him. You love hating him. It's the best yeah. thing. You know, it's like there's some people you hate. Like I, spoiler alert, Game of Thrones. Spoiler alert, it's coming. Uh, when Have you seen it? Game of Thrones. Yeah. I've seen the first season and the last season. Game well, then I'm going to tell you. Oh, uh, do you when can do whatever Joffrey you want. Joffrey dies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Get fucking rid of him. That's how I feel. You okay. know, like uh -huh. you hate. And I know it's the actor doing the, the job he's supposed to be doing, but I don't want I hate him so much. But with Lewis, I don't know. It's something where it's like you hate him. And then when he's not there, it's like, let me. I want to hate him some more. Yes. You know, and then. It's a lot. It's then then you love him because and then and then you just realize oh that he's just fucking toxic. It's like dating somebody that it's a he, he's a, he sucks. Mm -hmm. I think and then he doesn't, and it keeps going and it keeps going. But everything when when you when when you empathize with him like you I I you know like you cry when he gets this certain way and then when it's not you get so angry. Man, the show's so fucking good. I know I talk about it all the time, but you got to check out Suits. And if you don't want to watch it because watching stuff is boring, there's a great podcast that has no video for some reason. <laughs> just put an iPhone. Sure. You, take your yeah. iPhone and just do it and then upload it to YouTube with the audio. Just, you're going to get so many more new people coming. Anyway, yeah. while we're talking about Pearson, what or her, her dress is more expensive than yours because it makes sense that she wears yes. them, but for you wearing them, not making that kind of money, okay. I always was confused about Love that. Love that question. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so we had to talk about this at some point and they even sort of scripted it in when Donna goes and works for Lewis, when she leaves Harvey to work for Lewis. Season five. Then they're, wow. I think, Amazing. Yeah, right? I'm sure you're right. I, I don't know. I haven't watched all of it yet, right? Um, there was a scene that... Uh, uh, I, I the reason I one of the reasons I remember that season is uh, I rewatched it I think in June in July, and uh, I was at home with my family and you and I had already followed each other on Instagram, um, and respectfully I don't think about all the time who's following me or that you're following me I was but I just watched the show, and uh, it was spoiler alertish, uh, Harvey you work for Lewis and then Harvey isn't anxious and blah, 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 blah. You get it. You were there. And then there was a time where, um, 
where uh, uh, you realize, you know, it's time for you to move on and accept and, you know, welcome the new secretary and blah, blah, blah. But also Harvey does it and he comes over and he thanks you uh, uh, and you go, what for? And he goes for 12 years and the music and everything. I don't mean watering it's eyes. It's Coldplay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, fix you, right? Do you know how lovely you are? <laughs> Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. either, but Coldplay sounds right and Fix You is a cry song. And I think it's a cover, right? It's a cover. It's, cheaper. it's a beautiful cover. Yeah, and but then we have the real Coldplay at the end of the whole thing. But anyway, oh, go spoiler ahead. alert. They get the real Coldplay. Where Sorry. the wedding? I don't remember that. Um Viva La Vida when we're walking out, right? Um I'm crying so much oh, where I did like yeah. an Insta story, like laughing, like I, I talk about suits a lot. And I'm like, it's fucking suits, man. It's got me. And I was like, Oh, I wonder if you're gonna see this. And uh, I missed it, but I want to see it. Get it in your archive and send I it. I could to probably me. find it. You can um, show it to me today, probably that when we're done. Uh, we'll picture in picture and just act like you're responding to it. Oh wow! Look okay. to look to it right there, though. Oh, look here. Oh, what am I? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a little Aww. bit longer. But, um, and uh, yeah, that and I'm like, fuck, dude, it's so good. What did it hit? What did it do to you? What do you think it triggered in you that made you get emotional? What did you feel? Um, so I, uh, I don't know if it's that specific of like, that was emotional for me and I got triggered as much as I fall in love with characters and their relationships are so like suits, good television period. But like people say friends sucks. I didn't grow up. Have you seen that it became like a viral thing? Why does everybody love friends? Why does everybody have to hate on things? Like, why do we even bother? I I don't know. It's I'd much rather be around enthusiasts than not. I think from a psychological point of view, I think the reason people like to hate on things um, is because it is a way for them to connect with other people. Oh, okay. You could also do it. Not saying that's a good thing. You could hate on things. You could. It's a really interesting point. That's fine. But like. To understand the psychology of like, oh, when people like get excited about this or gas or whatever, it's like this is their potentially probably toxic way of bonding, but bonding nonetheless, which all humans need to do. And that's how they learned or like to do it. And if they're disconnected from the business or these people and don't really appreciate how much work goes into everything and how hard it is to make stuff, it's like, even if you don't love it, like so much went into that. They don't empathize with that part of it. But wait, what were we just talking? Oh, so friends, like there was a thing for a little bit where a couple of years ago, people were like, why do people love Friends so much or blah, blah, blah. I didn't grow up watching Friends. I think Friends is a very funny show and I've seen a lot of episodes because people watch it and every time like, this is a good show. Um, so I say that not being from somebody who's like, fuck you, Friends is the best. But like, why does Friends work? Among other things, six characters, you put any two of them together, there's a different dynamic. You know that dynamic. You could probably write that dynamic and it's just so specific, you believe it. Suits has that and and then for four seasons um you're low status and harvey is here mm-hmm. and uh i'm not remember find everything i'm saying put picture in picture from the show but you're um, here uh, you're here yeah I'm here but like still there was a mutual love and respect and for the first time you took it back by leaving and the dynamic changed for the rest of the show we don't know that but in that moment the rest of the show and like he doesn't like it and his character changes because of it. And then you have, I don't know, I'm making this up, but that's probably episode four. Like there's three or four episodes where he's a certain way and then he accepts it. And it's just like, that's so beautiful. Like you could have done that before, but you weren't ready. I like that it didn't happen in the first episode. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe I'm just rambling now. I think that I just believe your characters. I believe your relationships. The acting is so good. It's written very well. And it's a procedural, just another procedural show where every episode there's the structure, you you get it. And like, it doesn't matter. It's just so great. Anyway, I think I'm, I'm talking too much. Do you cry much. easily? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's so I nice. Don't, that one was like, I, I get watery eyes a, bot, a so, bunch, but. Can I have like a theory i'm wondering i i remember that moment and i think from the inside of the character 
of Donna. So this is very actory since Love we were it. talking about that. Love it. Like she finally got acknowledged. Mm-hmm. Right. She 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 wasn't exactly saying like, be grateful for me. Be, you know, like she wasn't overtly saying that, but she took action for herself for like the first time. Mm-hmm. And then it just so happened that she received actual gratitude for who she is in his life. And then he walked away and she was kind of left like, oh my God, I, I kind of got the thing. The, mm-hmm. the, and maybe it's not to make this like a cheesy, really big deal thing, but you're sharing that it made you emotional. And I just think it's really human to like need to be seen mm-hmm. and appreciated and, and, and to be told to feel it, you know, that, that you matter, right? It's like, and, and yeah. maybe it connected. You just were moved. I think that's a great hypothesis. And also, yeah. And the music really helped. Always. I mean, and the way they, and we, like our directors, our directors were so brilliant. The way, like, just the way they moved the camera, where they put the camera. The did way you they have uh, different directors all the time, or did you have a pool of a? Uh, we had a pool at w- both, both. Yeah. But we, you know, they were we we were so lucky to have directors that kept coming back, um, and we had great editors. I mean, that's a huge thing. Yeah. Huge. So do we. Shout out to John Michael. John Michael, shouting you out. You, Hi, John. Oh, <laughs> there's a camera. You look at mine. Do you know that I did not? I mean, I didn't like. Yeah. You don't I know where your cameras are? I find that hard to believe. For I the do walk not. like that? I do, I do not. I literally just didn't, like a couple minutes ago, I was like, oh, there's cameras on. It's it's really, a, when you were talking, you didn't see me get kind of lost over here. Like I went, oh, there's one there and there. I kind of registered these, but I didn't, re- yeah, no. So when, when, uh, when second team is going through rehearsal, do you not watch it at all and see what the shots are? What I, tr- um, sometimes I'm trying to get better at this. I don't. I don't know whether it's better to ignore the camera or to know that the camera's there. Always look I, into the camera, and what? then we'll fix it in post. I always look into the camera. <laughs> it's why I don't really get roles from auditioning. Water. <laughs> um, I think it's like an in uh, a, 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 a very interesting thing because the whole battle that we always have, and I would love to know your perspective. Of this also being, we t- we touched on this a little bit, but what, but what, from stand up, an no, being self conscious, oh. like when. When does that ever help us? <laughs> oh, um, is there a time when self consciousness yeah. can help? Oh yeah. Can you say more? Can you teach me this? I'll say a lot. So that's why I think I do sometimes block it out, you know, because I'm like, that's that that's gonna get me in my head and awkward and weird and uptight. Um, yeah, but don't like you want to know though if like you're gonna it's close or not, right? Like that, I do think that's important and, and yeah, for sure. Um, I think being self-conscious helps when, uh, because without it, we won't become aware of things we're unaware of. Um, I don't think, um, you know, when you get into like the shame aspect of it and the things that you can't change, uh, and the things that you see yourself in a way that is n- negative. Are you doing that because of this? Mm-hmm. We add in, we put in our own gulps. Oh, You're you fine. want gulps? No, we have our, we have gulps. Oh, okay. we, we don't like chewing and swallowing sounds. Uh-huh. Um, that's why you were going away from the mic, right? Yeah, I was moving away to not have gulpity gulps. We did, no, we oh, take okay. care of it. Oh. Something that we do, thanks John Michael. Um, we have a lot of people who listen to this podcast who are 20 to 30 year old hot chicks, and also a lot of people with a lot of anxiety and sensitivities to sounds. Oh. So the, the main two demographics that advertisers like. Shout out to Rocco Refrigeration. And if you want one, head to the link in the description. <laughs> but um, being self-conscious about something lets you be like, ooh, I, I don't like this about myself. And you have to think that before you could change it. Yeah. So I think that's where it benefits you. That sounds like, of course, in life and being somebody who is a, a good family member, a good partner, a good citizen, you need to have a consciousness of self. I think I was referencing it more in terms of like when you're making a thing, 
like when you're making a But how does story. watching a camera of second team and what they look like oh, make no, no, you self-conscious? No, I just mean I just mean I right now like the more I think about that there's a camera there the more weird I might get. Oh, oh but watching second well, team is great to understand. <laughs> watching second team is good to understand. Yes, absolutely. I I just there are some things that it's kind of a little bit, and I, I know I keep referencing this, but it's kind of why we're doing the podcast, Patrick and I, because we never watched it because we couldn't. Wait a minute. Yeah. Well, you said rewatching it. Well, were you there's being a kind? there's a kind of podcast called a rewatch podcast, right? Yeah, but if you've never watched it, it's just a watch podcast. It is. So this is your first time watching it. Mm-hmm. Have you finished it? Or are you going one by one? For one the by pod? one. One by one. It is not the first time we've seen parts of it, and when the f- thing first started, we wa- we. We watched it to some degree. It was a long time ago, but I have not watched 134 episodes in. Okay, I'm going to yeah. say something that other people say, and it makes sense. Actors are so fucking insecure. I know. That Isn't that make... why we do it? No. No, we're here. We, can, we, yes. No. There is some piece of us that <laughs> drives us to do this thing because we are, <laughs> we are insecure. Humans are, are insecure. Yes. Jim Carrey just said that he just said I am an actor. He didn't because just I'm say it; it just went viral. We all, that. yeah, that he's an actor because he's broken. I act because I'm broken mm. uh, oh. in a lot of pieces, mm. and uh, acting gives me a chance to reconfigure those pieces into a thousand different things uh, that are positive for people to watch, and uh, eventually I will be ground down into a fine powder <laughs> and, uh, and snorted. Is that how you want to go out? It's snorted. <laughs> Okay, so you have a point of view about that. Say more. I can see it. I thought it was an interesting thing. It is interesting, but there's a million people that aren't actors or don't want to be actors that are also broken. Of course, that have their traumas, that have that have their, oh, yes. their things that talk, they've yeah. come up with uh, on how to deflect and and things that serviced them when they were younger that might not anymore. Or what we do, um, uh, what artists do, is they find something that maybe serviced them when they were younger and it might not anymore, but they found a way to service them in a different way and express themselves in things. And humans are. Yeah. The idea that like actors or entertainers are different. Yes, there are differences with what they prioritize and what they want. A big part of it though, more so than broken and wanting attention, in my opinion, is we want to feel, as humans, we want to feel seen. Uh, we want to be validated. And when we do something that is validated, it it inspires you to do it more, especially if you can make money from doing it. I think that there are so many artists that love making art, not because they're broken, but because it, they're expressing themselves, they, they feel confident when they do it, 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 they feel that it makes them attractive, whatever the many reasons are. But the idea that like, I have friends, but one in particular I'm thinking of, who won't watch anything he does. And I've seen, I think, everything he's made. And I, I think he's very funny. I think he's talented. I think some of the stuff he's made is incredible. I think some of the stuff he's made is whatever. Same with all of us. I think that his batting average would be way higher. If you look. If he watched, how could I do this less and this more? Like an athlete looking at the tape. Like yeah. looking and learning from it. So we did, I did that when I, when Suits first happened. Like I watched for notes, right? I watched some of my Meaning performance. the first season? The, yeah. And, and then you're also checking like, uh, how was that dress look? You know what I mean? Those kinds That's of things. That's tough stuff. That's probably harder for women. <laughs> yeah. Um, but ultimately didn't it Aaron our our creator used to ask me why I w- wasn't watching it and how I did would he know say, what how did he know because I would t- I would say well, I haven't watched that one yet and he'd say why and 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 sometimes I say because I think it's easier for me to watch I can watch with kinder eyes the more time I let go by because also if we just shot it and it got edited sometimes I might be like oh why they use that I, tape? I understand Why'd that. Why they do that? And then I'm just going to be like in a nitpicky, like icky place. So it's easier to just kind of let it go. And then what we're doing now is we're looking at it with this time, with time having passed by. So we were looking with kinder eyes. Do you, was it harder looking? Um, I also really just want to follow up and say, I completely hear what you're saying about like 
actors aren't like special and different than everybody else who is broken and has their their pieces in them. I'm just saying that something in that drove us to do this. Thing. Yeah. So, and so that same thing that drove us to do it are, isn't then, different watch. from other people. I'm just saying we just happened to pick the thing. Yeah. I didn't mean it in yeah. such a, in a way where I was like, a status way. I didn't mean it like that, like different or worse special or something. I meant it more just like the psychology is the same. Whereas like some people do jobs because they, that's, you have to make money. And then some people do jobs because they have to make money and whatever that thing might be. And I think it's easy to forget I'll speak for myself when I have to go on the road to a place I don't want to go to, which is new for me. I'm just starting to travel with this stuff. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm like, I don't want to. It's like, yeah, I'm so used to doing what I want to do that it's like, it doesn't feel like a job, but it is. And like you said, like an athlete, it is a job. And when you don't watch yourself and when you don't, because, oh, I, I think I looked ugly. I, I did a show called As We See It. Um, uh, do you know Jason Kadams? Mm -hmm, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, he's amazing. amazing. And it's his show. And I was, it's the thing I'm most proud of. Oh. And I remember seeing- uh, Tell us where we can see this. Um, on Amazon Prime. Great. And I saw, before the show came out, um, the uh, uh, the uh, directing producer was editing some stuff and I was looking and I saw a shot of my profile and I had, I mean, I don't know if they, they in post, they got rid of my chin or that's really what it looks like. But I, I felt like so like insecure, not about performance, just like I looked so ugly and I thought I looked so bad. And uh, that was my first thought. And I watched the scene and I loved it. And I was like, oh, I'm, 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 not, I'm allowed to be ugly. Does that make sense? Yeah. So mm -hmm. like, even when I look bad or I've done stuff that I don't think it was a great performance in, I'm like, ah, oh, I could have been better. I, I want to watch everything. I want to watch my friend's stuff. I want to watch my stuff. I don't remember what the point of this was. Oh, so you said looking back and kind of rise. So, the, but with the vanity thing, there's times where like there's pictures of me that I thought I didn't, I, I didn't like the way I looked in, and I didn't like the picture or whatever. And then years later, you find this picture. You look back, and not only you always look better back. You never, yeah, you, never then, you never get yeah. better looking, yeah, 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 <laughs> you know, like yeah. that's what I was afraid if I could be back to that thing, you know? So, so one, there was that. And also like, I'm looking back at like the time I'm looking back at, oh, that was as a Disneyland. Now I'm looking, you know, how does, how do I, how does my hair look or whatever? Um, so I get that, but also, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm just, I'm, I'm making a point to make it at this point. Um, the idea of being insecure about watching something that we've done, uh, I just think that that that's a bummer. Well, yeah, it's a bummer. Let me ask you this. So you said something about your chin, you know, in that scene that you watched. Did you notice that it followed you into the next time you were shooting a thing and you were being shot from that angle? Were you wondering about your chin? I was aware of it, yeah. Yeah, so that's what I mean about the self-consciousness. Like, oh, this camera here shows this thing that I saw in that other thing, and now I'm thinking about that yeah. instead of being connected in here and present and with you or makes whoever. sense cost That's benefit i was aware it's my chin i also know like i'm not going to be able to fix my chin at least not now you know maybe <laughs> you could buy those things where you bite and stuff but like but what i got from it was i saw where i was not there was there was a couple of character traits that, that i brought into it that were things that i did when i was younger certain like i used to have certain things that i would i did a lot I would do this all the time. And there were certain things that I'm like, oh, this character reminds me of younger me. I wanted to do those things. And I wasn't sure how big it would be. And uh, I saw um, I saw after, because I didn't get to watch. I saw after the whole thing came out and we only did one season. If we did another season, I would see, oh, I could have done this instead. And I thought this was too much. And like, I would like to be, Learning so and conscious growing. about the chin, sure, but about some of the other things. Oh, I, uh, yeah, I want to know. Yeah, and it was important to watch some of it, uh, especially starting out, to make sure, like, for me to be like, do I have the right tone? Am I in the same world as these other people? Like, what is the tone of mm -hmm. our show? Because you can't totally get that from just reading the script. So you want to make sure that you're doing what everybody else is doing because you're not on set when everybody's, you know, shooting the the, the other stuff. I just had a conversation with the, with a writer director friend of mine for a long time about tone, 
okay. and how important that is and how that's one of the biggest jobs a director has, I guess in movies, your Aaron or whoever was running your show. Could you explain what you what you figured out the tone was and could you describe the tone? Uh, well, uh, what was really interesting about our show because we were on for nine seasons and we were on USA and USA kind of rebranded while we were on their network. So it went from a blue skies to like a darker. What does blue skies uh, mean? Blue skies was what they called the kind of show. Like it's never rains, right? It's always blue skies. Is that a metaphor? A, or do you mean that literally? They, they, I think they used that at the time, like blue skies. I think it was like. I'm saying is that literally the exteriors are blue skies or is it like everything should be happy? Both, I think. I think both. I would have to ask the execs about that, but that was like the vibe of our show was a blue sky. It never, oh. It's never raining outside of Pearson Hardman. No way that's true. It never rains. Did you ever see rain on the windows? I mean, I it's, it it's, it's in a sound stage. I guess that's yeah. extra work. But like even the exteriors, it's, there's sometimes no it rains when we were outside. Yeah, yeah. But what was the point? Where were we going with this? Uh, tone. Uh, tone. Yeah. So because I had comedic moments, I wanted to make. Uh, you know, am I too broad? Am I? You know, right? Like, what? What world are we in? So watching what other people were doing when the shows came out was really important to be like, what. Uh, Rick had a scene about a cat with Rachel Harris. Like they're both hilarious people. Let me see where yeah, they're Rachel's taking really it. Funny. Oh my God. So, so funny. And I don't consider myself a funny person or a comedian. So I was like, I better check, huh. make sure I'm in the right lane here with yeah, this stuff. You're in the pocket, the whole series. <laughs> um, Thank you. Do you ask the director or something like, to, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. how, will you talk to me about like those conversations? Like asking the director about yeah. stuff, uh, about tone stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> Aaron always would tone with a, a director about what he what he wanted the tone of a scene to be. Um, did you overhear any of those conversations? Sometimes. Sometimes we did. More so he would rely on the director to to relay that to us. But I find I Look, we always we need a director. We need directors. So I would, I still do this. Like, I'll just sometimes go like this to a director, mm -hmm. you know, big or smaller. Um, do you have a conversation with them before that though? Sometimes, sometimes I'm like, uh, let's do a three, five, and a seven, and then you can, you know, on as the meter. As far as big, yeah. It, whether it's a motion, why three, five, seven instead of one, two, three? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Let's get those. You hats. know, I like to give myself ten numbers in there, sure. so maybe I don't. Maybe I want more. Gradients. Yeah, I guess because because if you, if you're if you're too if you're if you're supposed to do a one and you're too big, it becomes a two. But if you're supposed to be a three and it's too big, it might be a four. So you didn't quite go to the five yet. Yeah, yeah. Gives you a little bit of a buffer. I also would like to have an opportunity for a ten every now and then. Gabriel Who was are you telling? Gabriel was directing once. And he he was like ten. Just one? He did one episode? No, he did he did he did a couple of episodes, but I remember this one moment when he was like To you? Yeah. What what like, was it? Go for it. It was like I'm in my position because I fucking earned it. Oh, right? when you're becoming when you become a, a CEO or CFO or whatever. CEO, yeah, and, COO? He, and and we're like in a location and we're kind of Don and Harvey are sort of in a fight. I remember I'm in a white dress and he was like, Do that. Like, cause I fuck it. And I added fucking, I was like, mm, I don't think we're oh, yeah, on that show. What happened to that, by the way? How, how did you guys start saying fuck and stuff? I don't know. This is a great question. Let me find that out on and do it on our podcast. I, I guess it had to do with what time slot we were on in USA. And then I think we had a certain amount of fucks. I think it's why we say goddamn all the time is because they were allowed to say that, but people really took issue with you it. You know what else you guys say all the time? What? Okay. Well, you didn't come here to podcast. So why don't you tell me why you're really here? A lot of that. <laughs> a lot of that. Uh -huh. A lot of that. Like suitsisms. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, so the so I guess the whole thing about the like three five seven one two three is uh, yeah. So we watched originally. I think we were watching to make sure that we were in that world and see our work. And then as we got farther along, it just became harder to watch, and we didn't, and we got busier, and and now's the time. I think what happened. The reason why we're doing the podcast is because. It wasn't just the resurgence of suits. It was that Patrick and I would talk about it and we were like, we really haven't processed this experience. We haven't basked. We haven't mm -hmm. like, 
watched. We haven't connected about it. It was an amazing time, but it was just a go, 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 go time in our lives. Like I was pregnant between, I was pregnant season one. I had a baby between before season two. So like my life was pretty hectic. Wow. So I wasn't that terribly present to it. But then when we have the resurgence, it's kind of like, wow, I'm so grateful for this thing in my life. Where do I go to lodge? Where do I log my gratefulness? Like, how do mm -hmm. I do that? And then you're out in the world and sometimes I do conventions. I have opportunities to meet fans. You hear what it means to them. And it's like, gosh, how do I, how do Monetize I thank you this. for it? No, no, no. <laughs> yes, of course. No, how do I, how do I, um, how do I find, how do I metabolize the meaning of this? And that's through connection, connections mm -hmm. with Patrick, connect, connections with everybody else who worked on our show, but also with fans, like fans are going to call in. We're going to be able to connect. We're going to be able to make the meaning together. You know, the people were like, oh, 57.7 billion minutes were watched last summer. It's like, I, I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't either. What does that mean? Um, anyway, you were, yeah. The, uh, <laughs> uh. I had Rain Wilson on my podcast. You oh know my Rain? God! I'm see. What am I? I'm gonna leave. What am I doing here? Um, <laughs> yeah, I I, 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 I think Wilson. you're the second most now that I realize guests that I've had on this screen because uh, the amount of Office that I've watched, I've I've watched the series maybe six times and then random episodes all the time. Also, Rain Wilson in the world, like the Rain Wilson, Wilson version of Rain Wilson, like the he's, conversations he's having, what he's doing. He's, he's so love, beautiful. man. He's and he's so good at what he does. Um, shout out to Soul Boom Podcast, by the way. Available on audio only as well as YouTube. It's on YouTube. Oh, yeah. It's oh. doing well on YouTube now. Um, but uh, one of the questions I asked him that made me think of what you just said, because uh, The Office, from when it came out, it's been that powerhouse, or since season two or three. Um, I guess four, technically. But for years, Suits kind of just happened last year. Um, as far as it being this bigger than zeitgeist. Is that fair to say? That's fair. Um, and like what the office has done for me and rain being one of the biggest parts of it, of like breakups and depressions and COVID and, and just anxious and panic attacks and needing to distract myself and how important for me, everybody, I'm not everybody. I mean, I guess if you're lucky, but like a lot of people have their thing. Um, a lot of people is reading. That's not it for me. Um, music, whatever. But like how much it's, I've watched him when I've been in these places where it like saved me is dramatic, but like, thank goodness I had that thing. Soothed you. I mean, so much. For sure, right? Um, and then to have him on my couch and there was a moment where like, because you're podcasting, you're working and then you realized this is crazy that you're here. So then you're thinking like, oh, all these fans and this blah, 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 blah. Like, uh, uh, I went through uh, a, a breakup during when the suits came out. Uh, since I rewatched them last year, I've watched a couple times. Um, and like most recently, I was at home and I was just feeling a bit anxious. And I just wanted to put on the pilot just because I wanted to watch something. I love watching something I've seen before. Um, and then I watched episode two. I'd, I'd already just watched, I watched it with my dad and who had already seen it. And then, um, I'm like, I just kept watching and I just, I, I watched five seasons in two weeks oh, wow. and it's like, I needed it. You know, I didn't need suits. I needed something and suits is able to do that for me. Um, so that like, makes me so happy. I'm, I'm, thank you for sharing that with me. That's um, so lovely. Yeah. Like we, we all have those things. Right. And I, I can't believe I get to be on a thing that, what, um, what is one makes, of yours that, that does that for you. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't believe that I got to be on a thing that, you know, soothes you when you're going through a hard Did you thing. say suits you or soothes you? Soothes. Gotcha. Soothes. That is a bomb. That is a salve. There, um, uh, th there's four shows that I now have that are like this. Uh, it's The Office, Sopranos, Game of Thrones, and Suits. And like, I'll watch, when somebody says they're watching it, I say, what season, where are you at? And I'll watch with them to continue. Like, yeah, it's a special show. So do you do, depending on your, like which one slots in for different feelings? Is it it's a not, variety? Sometimes I'll watch random episodes sometimes, uh -huh. but it's usually like, I want to watch whatever, like I wanted to watch the pilot. And when I watch the pilot, then I just continue it. I've done Sopranos four times, Game of Thrones five times, The Office six, I think, Suits twice, and I'll probably do it again soon. It's just, and I don't know what it is. I think it's the world. 
I think they all oh. have a world where it's like, I mean, it's in a nice way. It's easy to digest. Yeah, Game yeah, of Thrones yeah. actually isn't, but I think because I've already done it once, now it's easy, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's not the wire. Like, you know what I mean? Sure. You don't have to like sit and lean in and, yeah. you know, be sure that you're following. It's something that you ca- you could, you know, put the kettle on. and. It's also a, sh- a show that didn't really, ha- it's an episodic, but it is serialized in a way that I, I don't remember when it came out. When did Suits come out? Oh, four? 11, I think. No. Yeah, I, think I was so. Really? When did Suits come out? No way. Numbers are hard for me. 2011. I remember watching the first season at home and I'd already moved out here. I must have been visiting home or something. What's home? When Cleveland. You Cleveland. Okay. And that's where your parents are. Yeah. Okay. And do you have siblings? I have an older brother. Is he there? He's here. Oh, uh, nice. Uh, where do you live? I you live in... I did not know that. I assumed... Where do you get your coffee? Do you drink coffee? I, I don't anymore. Oh, okay, okay. But I still go to... We'll bleep it. I don't let people know where we are. We also believe where she is. Okay, um, okay, okay. Right here. Uh, oh, yeah. I like okay. Why did you take such a fucking car here? It. We had other, we were doing, there was, it was just like a day. Yeah, no, that is not, <laughs> I, I love the impression that you have because it's not at all accurate. With this, with, you know, <laughs> she came out with these sunglasses no. <laughs> and these, and she had the gloves that like, with the fingers coming, the Michael Jackson gloves. Oh, the Jackson driving gloves. gloves. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, um, and I took off all my diamonds before I walked in. Mm-hmm. That was nice. They're in my car. They're in my car, though. So if anybody wants to go, get well, where's you? Are you going to take that limo to your car? <laughs> a mile and a half away. <laughs> I don't remember what we were talking about, but um, yeah, your show does it. How did you become a comedian? Like how? Like a stand-up? How did you get into that? <sighs> this is going to sound really corny, but I'm yeah. broken. <laughs> and I just like I felt like I just needed the acceptance of other people. Um. I have I a very, that. very, very funny family. Okay. Very funny. Listen, I could undersell it and and uh, or oversell whatever it is. Um, every I laughed. I, everybody's funny, and everything is jokes, and everything is complaining, and uh, that combined with I think what a lot of people who are comedians would agree with that like you found I found ways of getting things if I was funny that I couldn't otherwise. Um, I could list, I'm very in touch with this stuff now, but I feel like I, I've i talked about it. On, not that I mind again. Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's just, yeah. I don't want to like, Boy, you're, you're here. a listener. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well. Yeah. But but uh, comedy is, um, uh, I think, a, like, a, I don't mean this in such a pretentious way. Comedy is a language, like, like a love language. Um, and when somebody makes you laugh, more specifically, we're on a similar frequency with somebody, whether it's laughing or anything. But the easiest way to to know if you're on a similar frequency is not even making them laugh, but if we both laugh at the same thing. At least in that moment, we share a point of view. We empathize with a situation outside of us. And I also always had a hard time. I didn't know this as a kid. I just believed everybody. But uh, I realized looking back, like I couldn't tell what was real consciously and what wasn't. Um, uh, I have a joke that I say on stage, which was, um, uh, I didn't know I didn't have friends growing up. I just thought everybody was busy. And like, I say that because it's such a microcosm of like, oh yeah, whatever, whatever. But something I always felt like, you know, when a laugh is real, like you can't fake laugh without me knowing it. Um, I think there was a round table Sandler even said, I think it was Sandler where, uh, he said like the hardest thing to play is laugh, fake laughing. Oh, yeah. Because could you do it? Can I hear you fake laugh? You wouldn't mean, ha, 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 no. Um, no, yeah, you can't fake it's laugh. It's too hard. No. So like when someone laughs, I just it's, you're, I just always felt connected to them. Um, why did you ask me that? What were we talking about? How did you become a... Yeah, but why... Cinema, but I, but I want to say that you talked about that a little bit when you were talking to Zach Woods on your podcast. About yeah. laughing? No, about knowing what was... Re- be About childhood and knowing what's real and a little bit of the loneliness of childhood. Didn't sure. you talk to, do you sort of bonded over that? You shared yeah, that. He, he felt that more so I didn't realize I was. I never felt lonely. Um, uh, that's okay. not true. I not, never. I was not included from time to time, but like I didn't, he, him, him more so. I didn't feel it until I got older. Um, 
and like how grateful I was looking back of how much I didn't realize how much like uh, I wasn't included in things, but I was close with my family and I don't know. I never really felt if I said something otherwise, I'd be curious what it was. But like I've been feeling lonely recently mm. and I've been thinking about it a lot and thinking about like I go home all the time. I uh -huh. go home for a month or two at a time, uh, once or twice a year. And like seeking that thing when I was a kid, I, I do miss that. Um, but do you remember? Do you think it's the place? Do you think it's Los Angeles? What do you think it is? Uh, well, I'm almost 30. And uh, I, uh, I want a family. You know, like you had your first kid while you were working on a show. My second kid. Uh, you, I thought that you were pregnant. The second one was season one? Yeah. You had already had a kid? Yeah. Oh, I, I guess. Yeah, it was 13, 13 years ago now. Um, I have, like, when I'm working and I'm lucky enough to make money, I'm like, what am I using this for? Yeah. Like, I mean, you get a great refrigerator and some nice Tyso cards, <laughs> sure. But, like, I really want a family. And... Uh, I don't think that maybe if I weren't in LA or in this business, that would have been something I would have found. Who knows? But I don't blame it on LA because like I have friends here that I love, but like if it weren't for this podcast, I don't know when I would see anybody mm. like this lets me socialize with somebody two hours a week, which is really fills me up. I mean, it's, it's, it's such yeah. a blessing having this thing. And like, I'm meeting you. Why? I wouldn't have met you and we wouldn't have had this conversation. It's great. You know, and it's then, such a treat for me. Thank you. It really is. Awesome. I'm glad you think that. Um, but like, then it's on the computer. Right. And editing it. And I got him because of this. Do you think, you know, touring is a really hard thing. Like traveling for work is a very hard thing. I haven't thing. done it enough for that to be a factor. Okay. okay. I, I never did it. I know, I'm just... I've done it six times now. Okay. And then okay. next year I have a tour coming up, punchup.live slash Rick Glassman. Um, but that's not what it is. It's, I don't know how, yeah, I feel like I'm projecting this on you or assuming this, but like you have a family, it's probably different. But like my friends, I have friends that live in LA. The ones that don't live within five miles of here. You don't see them. No. no. Unless you make a like, which I try and do. Let's go to Disneyland or let's go like do a dinner or something. Maybe every other month. Um, it's I found that really hard too, though, in New York. I lived in New York for 12 years and I found New York, I found the existence there incredibly lonely, even though you're like packed like sardines on top of people. It's so, it's so hard to see people, even if they're just like, you know, uptown and you're downtown. It's, you're not seeing them all the time. It's I just feel like, like that wouldn't be the case there, but I don't know why I don't just because you right. walk places, but. Right. Were you lonely then? I, I was, I was. I was, I think it had to do with the stage of life, but it was also like, you know, it's the bustling, hustling city and everybody's doing something. And I was kind of like, what's everybody doing? <laughs> you know, like, do you mean that literally what's everybody doing? Like, kinda, cause you weren't working? I was an actor. So there's all, you know, there's tons of downtime as an actor. Yeah. My you husband, like, it, or if he was my boyfriend at the time, would get up and go to work and, you know, it, it, I just felt like New York would, you walk on the street, like everybody is racing somewhere. You got somewhere to be, you got somewhere to go. You get like kind of knocked in mm. the shoulder accidentally by somebody. You get on the subway, you're packing in like sardines. It is an amazing city, but there is something really amazing about the moments when you feel lonely there because they're deep, right? Because you're not alone. <laughs> but loneliness can happen oh, anywhere. Yeah. I don't feel loneliness yeah. and company are... are uh... No. Synonymous by any means. Yeah. So, so that was, you know, now that I can reflect on that, it's like, yeah, I needed to figure out what brought meaning. What did you figure out? Community brings meaning. What's community to you? There are a lot of ways, um, community, community and purpose, like, uh, community can be your friend, you know, your best friends, which, uh, which I think COVID actually helped us find in a way. Um, and why? Because you were forced because to it's hard. It was hard to see people. Right. So you had to put in work if you were going to interact with somebody. Right. You had to figure it out. You had to have the distance, I you know, did, or you had to have a pod of people that you were hanging out with. I did up for uh, almost two years. 
uh, isolating, was it? Over a year, year and a half isolating um, lockdown, especially. And then it still kind of lingered for a bit. And for a year and a half, I did a podcast where uh, you would have been out outside on the balcony and the windows would be closed. And then we would hear each other through the headphones only. Was that amazing? Was that cool? What was that? What, what was the result of that? Like, uh, yeah, well, one, it helped because at first I was uncomfortable. Uh, and then a lot of guests wouldn't even do stuff. Uh, two, this was, uh, wouldn't go places. Two, uh, this was when podcasts kind of started booming because so many people were at home not doing anything. So a lot of people started podcasting and they were doing them over Zoom. And I feel those are very disconnected. So I felt like it, it, it helped me have a, a product that was that stood out. And also we would do a lot of visuals and editing. So like it became a, I, I think my podcast is quite is special uh, for better or for worse. It's different in ways that I love. And uh, I wasn't doing stand up. So it gave me a creative outlet with the editing and everything. But it also was an excuse. People would come over. Nobody did anything. I would see one person a week. They would come to my balcony, depending on the guest and when it was. The first few episodes, I wouldn't even let people come into my place to get to the balcony. So I had a like a fire ladder, like you keep in case you have to escape from someplace, you just throw the ladder down and they would climb up. But then I would get like drones and people outside and stuff to like make a meal out of it and see people walking down the street and climbing up the ladder. They're sitting outside, they're sweating. Are you making this up? No. It was called the balcony series. I did it for like a year and a half. And I would have, they would be outside and sweating because it's summer and or they could just climb the ladder. And I'm inside in my, on purpose, I just thought it'd be funny here, but like I would wear sweatpants and have my AC blasting. And like you would see them sweating. And uh, and that would, it was a novelty at first, like, oh, this is funny for five minutes and then like whatever. But then also it was the only way that we could do it. So during COVID, I saw, I, I made, I have friends that, uh, I'm think, a few, I'm thinking Eric Griffin and Adam Ray in particular that I was friends with for years. They became my best friends. Some of my best friends because they kept coming over. Um, it made your friendship deeper. Oh, COVID. Yeah. Because you had to do it under duress in a way. Or Maybe you had to be more creative in how you were going to interact. Podcast did it. Okay. COVID. COVID made your podcast wonky though. Like you, you it made it cool. You, you exactly. You wouldn't have thought to do that if we weren't in COVID, right? No, but even when it's over, people that come over, like, I, I, I see what you're saying with COVID. I think it's more the ob, like COVID. You had to force yourself to do stuff. Podcasting is a different version that, of that for me. Right. Um, I call it take your shoes off because that's the first rule of many. I normally would never want people to come over. Oh. Um, this was like, co this is COVID. Like. Wash your hands. Don't touch it up. Keep it on the blanket. I'm a yeah. lot better now. But forcing myself for a reason, which is the podcast, to have somebody come over, that's what made my relationships closer. Yeah, I have friends that I don't even, I, I have friends that I never would be friends with if it weren't for this. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. And that's how you started. I started pre-COVID. Okay. But it was during COVID when I found... Sorry, I'm talking about the podcast so much. Well, thank you for listening. Um, uh, oh, uh, thank you for sharing it with me. But it was during COVID when I found, because I was always doing edits and visual stuff. Um, started in April of 2019. So, you know, I was probably 50 episodes in before lockdown happened. 55 episodes, maybe. But that's when I found like, oh, I really want to lean into the drones and the visuals and the playing and the music and stuff. And uh, yeah, also like... That's another reason why I like TV so much. Um, I'm making stuff 
and I'm exhausted from making stuff. You make me something. Oh, yes, <laughs> you know? yes, yes. Oh, my God. That's how I feel when somebody makes me a meal. I, I was just thinking, I, bet, I know a, chefs feel that way. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Like chefs love going to restaurants. Restaurant people, my brother, uh, shout out to the Greyhound, by the way. Is your brother a chef? Uh, he has, he has, uh, uh, he isn't the chef at his restaurants, but I guess, but he has two restaurants, uh, Greyhound in Highland Park and Glendale. Um, and he, they go to the nicest restaurants. They love going to restaurants to see stuff. Yeah. Um, but anyway, when people make you food, what were you going to say? I'm just really touched when you go to somebody's house and they've made you a meal. It's such a beautiful act of generosity. I just think it's really lovely. Somebody ki- cooking for you? Sure. Do you, you eat know. everything? Do I eat everything? Um, Are you an easy eater? No, I, I don't consider myself an easy eater. I guess uh, something weird happened to me after I had babies. Like my whole thing changed. I don't um, eat red meat anymore. It's not a thing. It's just I just don't, I just don't eat red meat anymore. So maybe I, I don't think I'm the easiest eater. You said when we were walking in the door, you were like, I'm high maintenance. And I, I sort of loved that, that you were like, I'm high maintenance and that you owned it. And I, it made me so curious. I was like, I want to know everything you're high maintenance about. I love that. And I'm probably high maintenance too, but I never felt liberated enough to say it. I don't know if I'm high maintenance. If you, whatever you cooked me, if you cooked me meat, I would eat it. You know, I wouldn't eat a lot of it. Like, but if you went to the oh. effort to cook me that thing, I would certainly have a bite, even though I sort of don't. I just don't. When was the last time thing. you had a bite of red meat? Um, I believe I was at my friend's house a few months ago, and they grilled something, and I I had one bite off of my husband's plate. I was like, "Oh, they made that." He's like, "It's delicious. You you have to try it." I, I guess I can't explain this. <laughs> I can't explain my meat thing. There was something that happened after I had kids that I was Did like, you, "I can't eat." Was meat it anymore. the taste of it, or was it the cows? Do you eat? Other I don't meat? know what it is. Do you eat chicken? I eat some chicken. I eat fish. I make, oh, good. I made. I'll. After the pod, yeah. but I made you some chicken. <laughs> uh, are you? You say you might be high maintenance too, but you don't want to own it. Just we'll turn the cameras off for a sec. What do you think? At least in, in your professional life, could you say that is high maintenance? What's high maintenance for you? Like, what is your? I don't know. Of? I think this is a really deep question because I think this has such, this has to do with like so patriarchy. Sure. I always do this, but I want to make sure everything's going. Okay. Um. Like, were you saying like, maybe we're going to edit this out later? No, my old, I've upgraded my equipment, System. but the old cameras sometimes would turn off and I could usually hear it, but not some, sometimes I would check and like, oh fuck, it turned off. So I still have this thing when like, I've been talking to you and then I forgot about the cameras and you know, my chin, but now I'm thinking like, uh, oh no, are they still going? So I just wanted to check. Um, yeah, but maybe we'll cut the high maintenance stuff later. No, 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 no. No, what it, what I think, what was interesting to me about watching you say that is that I was observing, I think that I've been trained as a woman that being high maintenance is, would be something to be very ashamed of. We'll hang around more Jews, but go on. (laughs) That, why? What do you mean by that? That's so fascinating. Like, how long did you live in New York? Oh, oh, well, all my friends are Jewish. I, right. Yeah. So, so that's not new. But I'm just saying that's just such an interesting thing because to me, I'm just thinking of it as a gendered thing. Uh, I do recognize that exists. Absolutely. Um, and uh, as much as that is a choice for, your, for you to subscribe to or not, I recognize that you're under more pressure and duress and, and uh, 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 perhaps even could lose jobs or like... For what's... being quote unquote high maintenance. Like even the car. So the the Sirius XM, like they arranged a car. And I was like, oh. Did you come from home? Yeah. I was like, I don't need a car. And they were like, oh, it's already arranged. And literally as I'm walking down to get in the car, I was like, oh my God, I feel so bad that they got me a car. And how much did that cost? And like, gosh, do, what did, do, why do they think I need a car? I just drive it. Like I went through, I pretzeled myself for the entire walk into that car how about having a car. Think of you? How about people are going to think of it? I love that you picked up on it and were like, whoa, look at you, like baller showing up in your car. Like Argh. that is, but I'm, I'm super in my head about it. And who cares? So, so the employer was, did this really kind thing, like making me a meal arranging me a car. So drive in the car and enjoy it instead of me yeah. being like, I don't, I don't deserve to be in a car. I'm so high made I'm in a car. I mean, that is some craziness. Like just enjoy the six minutes in the car. Enjoy Somebody's the AC driving. and the SUV. There was water and 
like lifesavers in there. Yeah, plastic bottles though. Not we don't do that here. No, look at you. Here's my water bottle. That's yours though. This is mine. Yeah. But it was just nice that the, all that was all the amenities those those um those candies those Werther's originals. Do you, yeah. Do you ever enjoy those candies? I'm 27, so I don't eat Werther's. Thank you. <laughs> I know I'm 90. I am like a girl, golden girl, so I like those. But anyway, high maintenance, getting a car. And then you were saying, hang around with more Jews. Your manager Tell was here. Me. Was it your manager? Yeah. Um, did how did He's, he? Does he live near you? Um, did they go pick him up? Did he meet? They you probably at your drove place? him back to his car. Or whatever. Like. He's my manager, but he's my friend, and he, sure. he's a business partner, and he's a collaborator. You know, he like, came. He came over, and uh, speaking of high maintenance, see how ha- handsome and how, what beautiful outfit he had on. He did look good. He did you think always he was on camera? sharp? Oh no, no, no! He literally always dresses like that. So he got out of the car, and uh, I immediately wanted to because uh, he would have to sit back, sit back there, which yeah. he could if he wanted to. Yeah, that would be but, a nice place to sit. But. Uh, being aware of the cameras, to me, the cameras are supposed to be there. When there's somebody over there, I think it ch- it changes the dynamic. I, I totally agree. He had no plan of actually being in here. He was to, he was bringing me here while we were chatting. And I don't think he had an intention of coming in. If you, you know? wanted him to, I would have said okay. But yeah. but going to the high maintenance thing or whatever, like I'm not going to not say what I want. Of course, as you always should say what you what right. you want, which can be taken as high maintenance. So I think there's some people think of high maintenance as difficult and then some people think of things as difficult. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like when somebody says you went like this. "Mm -hmm." No, because I'm so stuck in gender on this. I'm watching myself. I'm so sorry. I'm watching myself. What's coming up for me when you're talking about it? What's coming up? And what's coming up for me is just like a gendered high maintenance you say, I'm always going to say what I want. You said that. And you did. You said you, you say it with such politeness. I am learning at my age. Talk to those 20, 30 year old girls. No, but I'm saying I am learning at my age to try to say what I want and need. It's attractive. Yes. It's not unattractive. But I have been programmed to believe you're going to be considered difficult. And how is that servicing you? I mean, Jim Carrey's broken. (laughs) Jim Carrey's, Jim Carrey is doing it because no, uh, because in case for whatever reason, you have heard you, you know what I'm saying? You have, you have I, heard absolutely. about actresses who's like, who, oh, she's difficult. That precedes her. And then she shows up on set and you're like, she is a ball. I haven't heard, I, I haven't heard this it actress is, is more difficult more than guys. Down. Oh, that I've one. only heard it in terms of actresses. I have seen same behavior from both genders and just seen that the woman was the one who suffered. Maybe I'm, I, this is semantics because I, I absolutely have heard and know what you're talking about with women versus men. But as far as like difficult is concerned, I've maybe it's because I'm a guy and I know more guys. I've heard it more about guys than women. But with guys, it's he's an asshole. He's difficult. With girls, it's uh, she's high maintenance. But like. I've also heard that like. uh Guys don't like a woman who's funny or guys don't like a woman who makes more money than them or these things where it's like, I believe that exists, but like go hang around another, another tribe because if I'm dating somebody who makes a lot of money, I I just don't understand in the pros and cons, where's, where's the con. And when I'm dating somebody who's funny or if I'm dating somebody who like, knows what she wants versus what's the opposite like guessing what they want where they want to go eat or if the temperature is right or if they're tired like tell me and then let me tell you okay or let me say "Eh, let's figure out a compromise it's just so much easier so this idea of being high maintenance in the business you would know better than me I don't get I'm not saying it doesn't exist I don't understand the gender thing like I, I don't understand how it's gender related. I don't see it gender related. I'm probably wrong. Right. Well, it's not your experience. Yes. And and even what you were saying just now about like dating somebody who has more money than you or whatever. I'm not going to, uh, you know, you, you are the architect of that. Like you're driving that bus. Like it's not going to bother me. You know, you are, are talking about an individual thing. I am talking about like I exist in a system that had some like unspoken rules before I got there sure. that I just have to learn to navigate. Could you give and me an example? And sometimes that means... I feel very often like I need to just shut my mouth and not need anything. So I, so can I give you an example? I'll yeah. give you like a very, I'll, I'll give you like sort of dumb examples. 
Perfect. Which is the best like, kind. Uh, also bring this to you a little bit more. Like bring it down. Oh, a little sorry. Bit. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I. I was I was on a show that had some really interesting dynamics, so I just kept myself quiet. And then when I went on my next show, so for example, a thing that always like hair is a thing mm. for actors, right, and actresses. When I was on Suits, a thing happened and my hair broke, right, and it became an issue. My hair broke. My hair broke. Like my actual hair broke. I don't know that what that means. It real means hair breaks. Real hair breaks. Real hair breaks when it when it's like over processed or like lots of heat on it, lots of styling, that okay. kind of stuff. So it it broke and And then what have to happen? You have to wait until new hair grows out? Yeah, and then you have to put in fake you have to right. wear so fake hair. So for three years you have broken hair? Yeah, you you know, wherever it breaks, you gotta it's gotta um and I needed to get fake hair, you know, to wear to get us through through the thing and I kind of had some concerns that that was going to maybe happen. And I sort of quietly tried to speak up about it. And I was kind of put in my place. To like, who? Hair and makeup? To um, like production. Just like a producer be like, I have this concern. And it was just sort of like you're sitting. It, it, it brought up probably high maintenance actress talking about her hair. And you know that? I will have a con. I, I, I. I believe that that is what happened because that very kindly, that producer warned me to not be too vocal because it seemed like, oh, maybe, you know, you're having you a big reaction. I know it shouldn't matter, but what season is this? I, I don't <laughs> I don't want to expose anybody. Like, I'm actually feeling nervous right now okay. talking about it publicly. To be, I'm going to be really honest with I you. I understand right what now. you're saying. You, you, I feel you nervous. You didn't insult anybody, but I understand what you're saying. Um, and, but that, so that producer was maybe doing me a favor, like, careful. You know, like you might want to be careful because people might start to talk sort of thing. And so cut to the show I'm on now. I had been on a show in between and my hair was super damaged and I was going on to this new one and I was talking to the head of the hair department. I was like, I'm afraid I'm coming to you with really damaged hair and like my hair broke before and I just, I'm concerned. I don't want, I don't want it to hold up production if it breaks again, this and that. And she was like, honey, <laughs> we're just going to get you some hair to, to prevent this from happening. And I was like, I, well, I can't be coming from me. I'm so afraid right. to think. And I was like, I'm really, I'm really nervous about having this conversation with you now because I'm going to be perceived as, as difficult. And, and she was like, you're doing me a favor. You're telling me that your hair might break. We're going to, we're going to avoid a thing. We can fix this by doing the thing. You're giving us plenty of time. Like, why are you? And I was like, I'm very in my head about being perceived by a new group of producers mm -hmm. as Difficult. It was a very real, I'm actually shaking on the other side of the phone because to me, what I'm realizing is that idea of being difficult or high maintenance or needing a thing could become, come between me and my livelihood. I understand that. It sounds really silly. Like I'm talking mm -hmm. about no, hair. Doesn't. I'm sure your You're listeners are going to be You're like, talking about reputa uh, uh, reputation. reputation. Uh, and to you, you and might perception. not be sure of, yes, how you're being received. Um, I guess one of the reasons and I live in fear of that, like it's a very real fear because it's a way it's, a, it's a very easy thing. Like there's a, there's a million of you. Oh, you're an actress. We got a million of you, you know, we'll just go to the next one. Right. So if we hear that you're difficult, we're not going to pick you. We're going to pick the other, you know, we're going to pick somebody else. Yeah. And I have a family to support. Like mm -hmm. it is actually, <laughs> It's not about hair. <laughs> like, oh, no, I, I appreciate that. you. You were the person who were like, you're talking about reputation. You're talking about that. I can't believe we won here. This is, um, I'm surprised. So I came into some self-awareness like seven, eight years ago. And before that, I didn't, I wasn't so self-conscious, relatively speaking. And I found out um, basically that like, oh, I didn't know how people were receiving me. Whether the, I believe they were right or wrong, had I known how they were receiving me, I could, I could have had the option to choose different ways if I wanted to versus I'm the best, everything's great, everyone loves me, and to find out that wasn't the case. So what I learned from that is both with me and also just the way this stuff works, um, I'm going to fill up my water. People don't think 
I mean, this is an arbitrary example, but it's you're not. It's if somebody were to think you're difficult or I'm difficult, it's not because of the hair. It's never because of a thing. Consciously, maybe, but subconsciously, you're the most annoying therapist. What I want to tell you is, um, it's when their expectations aren't met. And what I have found, and I feel like this is a little bit of a hack, uh, like a cheat, where if I, I could be this way, uh, which is the exact same in scenario one as scenario two, and if I could, which shouldn't be my job, but it, but this is, instead of, it's either worry or make it your job. I feel the latter is something better, what we could do. If I help shape or bring attention to us, what your expectations are, then it's not going to be a problem. The me saying out loud, uh, outside I'm high maintenance is a strategy, not specifically for you, but like I'm hot. I recognize I'm hot. With that, I'm feeling a certain way. I could not acknowledge it, in which case I'm not going to be present with you and I'm going to be insecure for whatever my own things are. Or I could acknowledge it to you. But if I acknowledge it to you, then I'm, oh, and then when you come in, I'm going to, I knew already, I'm going to have to tell you, don't put your coat there and you have to do this. I have all of these things. So instead of letting you figure out I'm high maintenance, let me let you know up top, just so you know what you're it's getting so into. It's so gracious of you to do that. Because it's yes. and it's not self-deprecating. It's 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 defining something. I don't think when I think of high maintenance, I think of people who are more high maintenance than me. I think I'm specific and I have OCD and I have my things. But if you don't know, oh, he has OCD or he's this or that, you might just think, oh, he's so difficult. Point is, and it brings me back to something I wanted to ask that we didn't get to, is the conversation you have with guest directors about tone. I have, I'm always still learning how to do this, and it's why I often apologize if I'm talking too much, but like I feel like I, I, I just over communicate. But like. Is there such a thing? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Um, and it only happens when you have two people who, uh, and, uh, where they're they're both not able to speak up for themselves. Like mm -hmm. if I'm talking to somebody and I've heard this already, I'd be like, you've told me this already. Like, what's this? Or what point are you trying to make? Like help do this together. But I've also been with people who are just back to what started this. I didn't realize I was bothering them. I would get silly. I would do too many jokes. I was annoying people. I, I was a show where I had headphones in my ears all the time in between scenes. Um, and they thought I didn't want to be there and I was being rude. and. Just tell me. I didn't know. I, I didn't know. Um, when I meet somebody, especially in a professional setting where I don't know them yet and they don't know me, like when I meet with a new director, I will have a, I, I ask them, hey, could, uh, at any time, I'd love to have like three minutes with you just to talk about something. And that's where I say, I there, like certain things that one could see as shortcomings uh, and or like, I love to improvise and I love to make big choices. I don't, I'm not three, five, seven, I'm eight, nine, 10. And uh, especially with comedy, um, because I love it. And I, and I could it's always bring it this way. But like I in rehearsal, I want to play and want to be big. Um, I need you. To, I would like to let you know that I'll need for you to be very direct with me. Hey, Rick, don't do that or do do this. If you want to give me a line read, if you want to tell me anything, but I'm not going to pick up on if you go, oh, that's fun. Why don't we try your way after this way? I won't know. So like basically saying these things, I've talked with ward with my with the wardrobe of um, this is going to sound very high maintenance. Um, I'm wearing pants out of respect, but I usually wear sweatpants or shorts. And when I wear pants, they're elastic. Yeah. Like I'm very specific. with. Yeah. I get very anxious with certain clothes. Um, if I have to try on... 10 pairs of pants and shirts, I, I don't melt, I don't have a meltdown, but like something happens to me. So I let them know this and I want you to be able to do your job the best you can. This is an obstacle for me. And how can we figure this out? I'm also, I'm into my character wearing the same certain pants for the next few seasons. Like, what can we do? Then it, it, it's less about me taking advantage of them and more about them recognizing I'm asking them for help. Does that make sense? Yeah, you're also helping them though because they have a job to do. So you're helping them the actually achieve it. Same thing. Yeah. Um, same exact thing. Like like she said, oh, you're actually getting me sooner. So like, I do think there's something about being able to go to producers and being like, hey, I have an issue that 
probably feels very low stakes to you, but it's eating me up and I don't want to be perceived difficult. Is there a time that I could talk to you about it and you could help me figure this thing out? And then it's like, people are willing to help you more if they think that you are looking at them as being helpful as opposed to you demanding it. And it's the same exact thing. You're just changing their expectations of it. Um, and that's where maybe I foolishly don't think there's a difference between men and women with that. Like, but yeah, I, I haven't gone through what you've gone through. And I've heard women say it's difficult being a woman. So I, I believe you. I think one of the, the things that was fascinating about Donna to me was when she said, remember in the beginning of the conversation, you were like, they wrote that thing and then they, that was a path for them. Right. And, and when they, when I don't remember what season is, but she has this one moment where she says, I'm not apologizing for who I am. Mm -hmm. And season three, episode eight. Stop. Is it, are you right? Or are you messing with me? I don't, I don't know. Okay. Um, she, so that really, I was like, I'm not apologizing for who I am. I'm not apologizing for who I am. Like, what would that be like? I I know this sounds crazy, but I really was like, what's that like? Like for Sarah, not for Donna. Well, yeah. Like, how am I going to play a character that doesn't apologize for that? Like, I apologized. I, I apologized in my head to the people who booked a car for me to come here today for like the inconvenience of them booking the car. Instead that is of pretty just... outrageous. <laughs> You're really close. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. Like I'm apolog basically everything is apologizing for taking up. I'm, I'm, I would, ap I hear what you're saying. I completely hear what you're saying about like to the producer, you know, here's a way to streamline this. I'm going to have an obstacle in this way and I want you to get to your end goal. So let me help you by exp expressing to you an obstacle that I have. Like that is a, a great way to do it. I'm going to get in my head about like, I'm sorry that I need three extra minutes. I'm so sorry. I'm so yeah. sorry. I'm taking up space and time and I'm sorry. That my sucks. hair broke. I'm sorry for the inconvenience of that. I'm sorry. And that is just exhausting. Uh -huh. And you are absolutely right. That if like there's that's comes, you know, l let's leave that for my therapist. But some of that is also the system, right? Saying don't, Careful. Would you feel that way in season six? Oh, oh, I don't, I don't know that I'm going to conquer this in this lifetime. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I be, once season, once I'm in a season two, I'm just, I'm, I'm just getting better getting at saying what I need, right? I'm getting better, but I think it's kind of amazing that I've gotten this, that I'm this age and still learning. Yeah. I obviously don't know you, but you, and uh, uh, what I do know, I see Donna a lot, you know? So like, I've seen that way more than Sarah, but like, I would have, I'd be aware it's an assumption, but assume that that wouldn't be the case. You very, even like when the way you got out of the car, you were very like, um, this isn't the word I'm looking for. Yes. Confident, but something in confident, like very like sure of yourself. If it feels like, and I, I don't know if that's maybe because there's no threat to your career or your livelihood more specifically in this situation? No, I got out of that car there? excited to meet you in person. I've never met you. So I was just like racing to get out of that car to be like, hi, oh my God, you have a dog. Like that was just me wagging my tail being like, oh, you're tall. You know, like I haven't met you. Like, this is so nice. You're having me into your home. That was the energy of getting out of that car. Yeah, you just, you, know? you strike me as somebody who's so sure of herself. And I guess those aren't I usually I think I was just excited. I don't just mean that. I just mean yeah. somebody who plays Donna. There's something you're tapping into. Yes, yes, yes. You're, no, you're right. You're right. No, and two things can exist at the same time. Yeah. I can both be sure of myself and be the person who's like, wow, what would it be like to not apologize for taking up space? Why do I need to learn that? You know? Yeah. I, I, you know, once you were aware that you needed to express this thing to the people that you were working with. I still get uncomfortable. Mm. I'm still uh, wondering how they're going to see me. And I care. So how do you manage that caring what they think? Um, I've talked to, I don't remember which one recently about this, like this idea of like, oh, I don't care what people think. Wow, they're so sure of themselves. I think n not caring what people think. That's weird. I can't imagine. Yeah, that. that's, I don't believe it. And if so, that's a very defensive thing. Of course I care what people think. Um, I just don't prioritize what they think over how I feel. And that's Ooh. kind of where like the logic trumps emotion, where it's like, I still feel this way. I still care. I still want it. But like, it's it, the decision is made for me because more I care more about for right or wrong. I care more about you sitting on my blanket. I would love to not care, but 
I today I do. This is my chin right now, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so like it is what it is. That's why I meant about this the thing. Like there's nothing I could do about it to right now. So if if you were gonna come in here and be like, you are you serious? I have because people have come in before the blanket was down. So I have to wait. You care if I put the blank? Like I recognize the judgment they have. I don't like that they have that. I would love to say it's none of my business and I'm fine with that. But like I care, but not more than you sitting on the couch. So there's no decision to be made. Yes, I know. That I could be self-deprecating. I'm high maintenance or I'm almost I'm such a fucking loser. I have to put a blank. Whatever gets me through. But I'm not going to not do the thing. And I think I've been validated by long enough, like I said, doing what I want, not at the expense of other people, but not at the expense of me. Like I'm going to do and ask for what I feel I need. And I've been validated enough to where it hasn't cost me my livelihood. Um, if there's friendships that I might have had otherwise that I don't know that I, I don't, like I didn't need them. And I now get to have you come over and people come over and do whatever I want. And I don't mean whatever I want dance for me, but like I have musicians that have come over that I'm fans of that are in my living room. And I'm like, I had Josh Groban on my balcony. Oh my gosh. I mm -hmm. never met him just like this. He came over on my balcony. I said, I think I want to do something. We bring a tuxedo. And he said, he could have said no, but he said, yes, you asked Josh Groban. Being That's so high maintenance. I'm like, I want to do a bit. So we did the podcast regular on the balcony. He's hot by the way. Um, and then I'm like, all right, we changed in your tuxedo. And then, and I had a violinist and a cellist outside and I played the piano inside. It was awesome. Every night in my dreams, I see you, I feel you. That is how I know you go on. Oh, wow, Rick, far across the distance, and spaces between us you have come to show you go on it came together really well one could say it's really difficult you ask somebody to come do you a favor and then you ask them to do an outfit change and you did a reset and you had them sing and then you had them you, you picked the songs for him to sing but like yeah i want to play with josh groban however i want and he could say no, you know, and it's just, and I'm just like, oh, this works out. Amazing. Yeah. Always do what you want. That's, that's, that's my motto. Um, and also my mom's kind of that way. So I think maybe I've, I'm grandfathered in. How is your mom that way? What's your mom like? Like, like if I could meet your mom, like, what am I going to, what's my takeaway of meeting your mom? Um, what's her name? Debbie. Debbie. I'm going to call, can I call her? Yeah. Call Put your mom. These on. Do we wear the headphones to talk yeah. to your mom? Do we call people on your podcast? Oh, yeah. We could call Patrick. He's going to be available. You want to call Patrick? You call him first? Well, uh, you, should we talk to Debbie? For, who, oh, hi. I've got these on. Yeah. Um, call No, call Patrick. You want me to call Patrick? Okay. Can I move? Yeah, I'm going to go <laughs> I'm afraid of moving things. Um, tr let's try this, this again. Done. Let's try this again about the okay. can I move. Let's do this again. But like, this is Donna and she has to move. Oh. How would you do it? Um. I'm gonna move. Yeah, you wanna switch seats? That's what Donna would do. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go pee. Wait, so you want me to call Patrick? Yeah, we don't have to take too much time, but like, oh, I mean, come on, man. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll find thousands of choices, including carpet, hardwood, rugs, and luxury vinyl. So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise, with more than 50 years as a family-owned business, we've got you covered! Also, out of respect, and I typically do this more so when a woman is a guest, I pee onto the porcelain so you don't have to hear it as much. Oh, there's, I, I've never thought about peeing onto porcelain versus peeing, well, you're silly, peeing silly. into the water. I guess I How don't think do? about that. Like that. No, I stand when I pee. That's good. Mostly. Donna. 
I like that. Very down of you. My first girlfriend, before she was my girlfriend, uh, when I, I was at her house a, a bunch because like we did a project together and blah, 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 blah. And I remember I once went to the bathroom. I didn't think about it. And I peed into the toilet and it was like loud. And I got like, huh. And I went to the porcelain. And ever since then, I'm like, when you're around a woman, pee on the porcelain. <laughs> my mama uh, raised me right. That is really classy. That is super classy. Did That's he, a big takeaway. Did he he hasn't texted back, but let's try to call him. And we'll see plug, if plug it up. in though. Okay. Let's see. And then. So this goes, oh gosh, I love that you're like drones and I heard you talking about all the th ways that you set up and everything on one of your podcasts and I was like, how does he know how to do all that stuff? You just figure it out as you go. That's really cool. Let me see if I get Patrick. Make sure it's because it's, it's plugged in, don't have it on speaker. Yeah. Okay. Is it going to come through? Like oh, it's going to come through these. Yeah. It's going to be really sad if he misses this, I feel like. That's crazy that he even knows what the podcast is. He's the one who said, you're the cool kid. Uh, hi, this is my... Oh. Please leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Do you want to leave Have a message? great day. Bye-bye. Yeah, you start. Hey, Patrick. Hi, Patrick. It's Rick Glassman from the hit podcast, Take Your Shoes Off. And I heard, unless you were just being nice, that you know about this podcast and it's a cool kid podcast. And I just want to say thank you. I'm a huge, huge admirer, and we were hoping to get you on the phone, um, and we didn't. So I guess what we could do is you could send a voice note about uh, why this, why Take Your Shoes Off is a cool guy's podcast, and then that could maybe be our cold open. I don't know. Maybe we won't use it. <laughs> oh, bye, friend. Do you want to say bye? No. Cool guys don't say bye. Oh, because you're too cool? Yeah. Can I take a picture of you? Oh, yeah, hold on. Do you feel comfortable with that? Yeah. There have been so many moments during this that I was like, oh, I wish I had my phone out. Um, um, okay, wait, the mic is is in front of Al. Oh. Calvin. Oh. He smells so He's good. a love. There were so many moments that I wanted to take a picture because the way, the way that you were sitting... And the way he was either conked out or looking, it's just a really beautiful, you should have, can I, you should move your camera here, man. This is beautiful. Well, like, I thank you I'm very much. This. It'd, probably, yeah. it'd probably help my chin out. Oh. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I actually wanted to bring it over more. Um, and I thought about I might wall mount. Because uh, this is a really cool angle of you. Like, there is a, there's a lot of interest in this. I mean, the, is that a blanketed statement we lost or are you the, saying? We lost the blanket behind you. Is that okay? Oh, it, it is fell a down. statement then. It was a, it was a statement that moved the blanket. Um, yeah, I wanted to not, I wanted to just because I, I want to, I want your camera a little bit more this way, mm -hmm. um, but I don't because the, it's fine. I, it just looks a little bit different and I'm beholden to having it match some, but yeah, I would love to have it there. Maybe I'll think about it. I thought about getting a wall mount thing and just cutting into my sound panels. Oh yeah. Like the cat. Who's the cat? What are the trophies? Um, this is from this. It's called the. Uh, Hollywood Critics Association or something like that. What is it called? Hollywood Creative Alliance is a award. Show. It was for one of them was for the Amazon series that I did. And did you have to go up and give a speech? Um, yeah. How was that? I have so many speech bits that I've been thinking about since before I even moved out here. Okay. Uh, it was good. So you crushed it. it. Well, it was a drama and I wasn't the only one who won the award. It was the, it was the, the show and the cast. So like I kept it, but like, I want, I want to win awards so much. I mean, who doesn't, but I mean like specifically, I want to have, it's, it's the perfect place to do stand up. Mm. You know, it's like, you're not supposed to be, it, it, there's so many bits, just tripping up the stairs, tripping down the stairs, having the, having a certain music be conducted for you in a certain way. When, uh, I I want to win awards for the speeches. Great. Um, Let's make that happen. Yeah. Well, you know, it's tough out there. Oh, my God. Wait. Plug it in. Calling you right back. I think I'm still plugged in. Here we oh, go. when he calls, we'll put him on. Okay. You know, I'm worried about how my hair looks when I put these on. I understand. Are you taking me seriously? Don't take me seriously. Oh, because if you were, I am not at all. I was going to be high maintenance for you. 
<laughs> and be like, I understand. And I was trying, but I thought I was, I was doing a funny bit. <laughs> well, the problem is I didn't know it was a bit yet. And then you bailed on it bit. too soon. I don't know how to do any of this. Okay, actually, let's turn it into a bit. How would I have made that into a bit and not bailed on it? Teach. Do you feel like teaching me? Well, yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> I love teaching people things about comedy. Um, so first we have to understand the difference between a bit and a lie. Got it. Do you know the difference? No. I mean, uh, a lie is a lie. A bit is a bit. <laughs> well, you lied to me. Oh. You said about your hair. Yeah. So the lie would be you trying to make me think that the hair would be messed up. The bit is you calling back something that was established or wanting to establish I'm high maintenance, but I'm not going to be high maintenance. And then you become high maintenance. So to me, the bit isn't the hair. The bit is a woman who says that she refuses to be high maintenance and doesn't realize she actually is. So then there's a game that we're playing. And if that's the case, you have to keep doing it until I recognize the game or if I don't, but hopefully they do, in which case you don't want to put the, 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 what did you say? You said you don't want to put this on, you don't want to mess I'm up I'm worried about how my hair looks with these on is, was my joke, yeah. Then then you have to say that to me and then wait wait for me to respond. Okay. And then stay in Oh, commit. That, commit, in the dis- commit to the discomfort of that moment of that space. Commit and, in spite of the discomfort, not for yeah. the discomfort. I see. Uncomfortable or not, you have to do it. So then, right, and now we, and now we have our game. No, I'm good. I can just hold it here like this. You know what I kind of dream of is if it's one thing and you can do the like. You don't have to dream of it. Hold it. How do you? Let's go like this. No, but you know how like. Oh no! Look, our bit isn't going to happen. So is he on our headphones? Hold on. Patrick. Hold on. Yes. Hold on. Patrick. I don't know if you can. I want you to meet my friend. Can you hear? I want to keep. Go ahead. Patrick, could you hear my voice? Oh, it sounds so good, Rick. (laughs) Oh, that's a sure SMB7s, my friend. Oh, that sounds good. Wow. He he knows all the techie things that you You know. uh, You're on my TV so much, dude. I want to come out and just say what an honor, first of all, because just a huge fan. uh, Long-time listener, first-time caller. Wow. Dude. I am, I mean, we've been doing this for two plus hours. And uh, I'm, uh, if you take out the one hour, 45 minutes of me talking at Sarah, the other 15 minutes was me talking about how much I watched your show. I am such a <laughs> fan, dude. That's distracting me. That's distracting me. Pictures. Dude, uh, congratulations on, um, on, on, on Sidebar. Thank you. Oh. We're so excited. We're, and we're so grateful to you for, you know, bringing Sarah on and letting me call in. It's, sure. Uh, we're excited. And we're moving in on your podcast space, which I know is just, it's a limited, only a few can survive. So it's fine. I, I, I've gotten to the point where w- this engine is run, running smooth, my friend. Uh, the the, <laughs> people, no the people who are like the pod, they ain't going anywhere. And the people that don't, who needs them? <laughs> 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 but uh, jokes aside, um, I was telling Sarah that we got to get you on YouTube. Yeah, can you explain that to Patrick? Yeah, Patrick, um, the the majority of people that watch uh, this podcast and many podcasts, more so in the comedy space, but it's getting more and more, uh, do so on YouTube. And there are people yeah. that, it w- that, given the choice, they might prefer to YouTube, but then they'll go to Spotify or wherever. Um, but there are some people that won't listen to it. They'll only watch it. So unless your right. contract says otherwise, I was suggesting even just take an iPhone and record you guys. Because if this was on right. YouTube, I know that I could get people to go over there and uh, leave some comments and right. subscribe. And it's easier to to uh, collaborate with other people that way. Interesting. Now, let me ask you this. When you have a situation like Sarah and I have, when we're going to be you know, hopefully gainfully employed and kind of both always in different places, do you think that affects the like success rate or the effectiveness sure. of being on YouTube? Bragging, get that. Uh, <laughs> so you could look at like uh, uh, like what the workaholics guys do. I don't know if you know that show, but they're all in different yeah. locations and doing different stuff. Shout out to Happy Gilmore too and Kyle Newichek, by the way, uh, who's doing yeah. it. Um, but yeah, yeah, they do they do it over Zoom and then just re- record the Zooms. Yeah. And it's good. They're, they're extremely funny. Um, right. Are Sarah and I funny and charming enough 
to pull it off because those guys right. have got the goods. I don't know I if you're do. funny enough. I've uh, m- majority of the stuff I've seen you do, you're funny on it, but it's not a comedy. Charming enough? Buddy, no. You don't got a problem. Okay. <laughs> oh hell yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll go we'll go live. Sarah, are we are you comfortable with video? Yeah. We're doing this? Totally. Well, okay. Is we'll this the reason? Happen. I want to be I want to be the reason that you guys are doing this. You are the reason. Yeah. And you get 20, I think it's 20 or 25% of everything. You've given me, you've given me so much more in joy already. I'll have am happy with 15%. Now, I got um, what I'm going to ask you guys to do then as, as a, as a, listen, I'm just a, who am I? You know, I got a, a decent following. It's not one of the big, big podcasts, but if you guys make a, a video one, make a commercial for it, like on your iPhone and you guys are together at some point. Um, and I'll, I'm going to, I'll put it on so many of my podcasts and until we could get your YouTube up a bit. All right. Wow. Hell yeah. I appreciate that. Is that true? I, here's the thing about podcasting. I have no idea about, I guess what is uh, big you, or not. Why because do you both to talk me, like you're 80? No, 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 no. I know, but I don't know what's popular. I know what I listen to. And I, to me, you're truly one of my favorite podcasts. So I just assume that your podcast is huge. Are you just being, uh, are you playing coy, or is that like I've had Joe like Coy? You make on. it sound like you have. <laughs> um, no, I'm saying I'm saying that like, uh, 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 my podcast has grown to a place where I'm like really grateful for, it and it's and it's doing well, and it's it's very cool, and like I have an audience that wants to watch this stuff, and I could see how it offers value to people coming on as a guest to promote stuff, but like there are like the big ten ones, you know, like. Right. Like armchair right, expert right. and Rogan and Theo Vaughn. And sure. like, there are some podcasts where it's like, sure. those are a different caliber. Um, it's a whole different thing. Yeah. yeah. So like, I don't think nobody could come on my podcast and it could change things for their platform. Um, so that's what I mean by that. But uh, the people that watch this podcast, I have a really nice, really like YouTube is a mean place. And my comments are like so nice all the time. And I've curated a, a, a people that like what I do and the types of guests that I have on. And I have, you would think I have points in suits with how much I've talked about it uh, uh, over the past, <laughs> past probably year and a half. And like, yeah. I get lots of messages and comments about it too. Like my fan base and suits fan base, I feel like are very aligned for whatever reason. Maybe it's just, they like me and I talk about it all the time. But I just know that like, if I were to say, hey, go over to their YouTube, I'm making this number up, but you'll have 15, 20 times more people that will go to your YouTube than would go to Spotify or audio. Wow. Only. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so I don't See, know. We are. A, yeah, no, you do know. You do know a lot. I would also uh, say a big part of this game, which is something you could talk about off the podcast, but if you're still listening, we're inside baseballing it at this point is um, you guys don't have guests on. Uh, I would say you either one of you or together do a podcast run on other people's podcasts on that yeah. spe- specifically people that are on YouTube where they could see you guys together and see the characters versus the actors and cutting right, to clips right, and right, stuff. Right. Yeah. I think you're a producer of our podcast now. I think that feels I would like be what's happening. Honored here. to, <laughs> to, uh, uh, not be a producer of your podcast, but like you have friends and you're, you guys are famous with stuff, but like I have a lot of friends that have podcasts that I would, say please have these people on i mean like do a comedy podcast run yeah that's that's, that's yeah mm. what, yeah what, what, what were you about to say what was your no, face what, what face did she make what face did she make didn't you hear she went well that's it it was the sound of a tire deflating what was that Oh, we've are we've i've already been like too self-serious on this podcast already with rick just just like being Trying to be on a comedy podcast that would I'm just, I'd just be like I can't. That's not what podcasts are. Yeah. You know who Glenn Howerton is? He's uh, uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He was in that Blackberry yeah, 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 movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Always Sunny to me is a top five comedy of all time, and he is so funny. He's also uh, which I didn't know this until he came on or right before he did. He's uh, uh, a Juilliard trained actor. He doesn't consider himself a comedian and he doesn't like the pressure as being on this comedy show where he has to be funny all the time. Okay, that sounds very familiar, right, Patrick? And the episode of him, there's some funny bits in it, but it's serious. He's like one of the funniest guys in this business, in my opinion. And it's very serious and it's 
awesome episode and people really liked hearing him talk about that kind of stuff. You don't have to be funny. You just have to fucking talk about, you know, uh, subsection C and, uh, <laughs> you know, shit like that. <laughs> Anyway, Rick, uh, can I Rick, can I tell you can I tell you a quick story of where I'm at right now and what just happened before I hopped on the phone with you? No, it was nice meeting you. <laughs> yes, please. Right now, I am at a place called Big Sky Archery in Bo outside of Bozeman, Montana. I walked in because I wanted to learn how to shoot a bow and arrow, and so I'm in the basement with a co-star on the show that I'm working with, a young lady, and we're both shooting arrows at fake animals in the basement when I got the phone call to call you. And I said, I have to, I'm going to go talk to this guy, Rick Glassman. And this uh, young, very talented actress yeah. shot her arrow across the room sideways and almost burst into tears. She's such a big fan of Rick Glassman. Wait a minute. You know what yeah. I just realized? What? You might actually are you playing cupid <laughs> what's going on here? i mean i mean it might i might be preparing for that role it was it, it was a moment it was uh it was i don't know best. it's a very strange place for this all to be coming together but i thought you'd appreciate that i uh, you have that effect I love on young actresses when a young actress or a not young actress like me um, yes, yes. I mean, age age is irrelevant. Yeah. 66. 60, 70. 60, 70. Uh, I know exactly how old you are. <laughs> I looked it up. I'm 67. It's wrong on the internet. Go on. Is it? Yeah. You're I'm, younger or older than the internet says? I'm 15 to 20 years older than that. No, you're not. Okay. In you my went heart, to school with Peter, Peter O'Toole, I think. Yeah, right? I did at RADA. Yeah. And you went to school yeah. with Adam Ray. <laughs> yeah. Love Adam Ray. We did go to school together. I did his podcast a while ago. Oh, I know. Uh, and uh, he's, I'm so proud of him. He's crushing it. Yeah, but ask, ask your actress friend if she would shoot an arrow across the room if you were talking to him. Definitely. I, I don't want to go on the, I love Adam Ray, but I don't think, I don't, I, well, you know what? I'll go try. I'll see. I'll report back to you. We'll report back. We'll put it, we'll add it to the cold open. <laughs> um, well, listen, man, I'll let you go shoot some arrows. Uh, uh, I mean, I've said, I, I, sometimes I'm, I'm such a big fan of you and your show. And I don't know if, if if adding your show takes away from like, oh, you just love Suits or me. I've become such a fan of yours. And the truth is, I haven't seen much of what your other things you guys have done. And I don't even know what your other show is. What is your other show? I I, am, I have lawyers that will descend upon me if I speak okay. Uh, okay. Uh, any words we about, about it, about it one day soon. But I would love to, um, you know, maybe one day we could continue this conversation in person or we'll have you as a super uh, Suits fan on our podcast. Would you, you do guys that, Rick? Would you Are come you on ours? You, would you come on? Yeah. You would? Would you have somebody who's never been on Suits? Yeah, yeah no. The whole point of what we're doing is to like actually investigate maybe what it is that you would like about the show and what you responded to. So maybe we'll do a thing where you watch one of the episodes with us or something and we can have a big conversation about it. Do you guys watch the episode? Why? You, you watch the episode separately and then you have it. You don't like do a live watch. We haven't done a live watch, but I think it's a really good idea. I think it'd be fun to do an episode where we do watch maybe gonna, like a, a gonna, season finale or something. I'm going to plant a seed and you guys are going to water it or, or not. Whether or not it's for a podcast, I would love to watch an episode with the three of us at some point. Oh On this God. huge TV? Yes. I'll I'll meet you anywhere. Okay. We could do it here. We could do it there. You we could do anything. You see TV. It's so. Pretty. You could do an episode if you when you're in town. If you guys are in town at the same time, if you want a special like take your shoes off crossover, do an episode of your show. We could do it wherever you want, or do it here, and I'll we'll put it all together. This is so much fun. I don't know if anything's gonna happen, and I don't. We should I don't, do. We should do. We should do a live show where we watch it at a movie theater with a whole audience, and then the three of us talk about it on stage. <gasps> I'll be honest with you. I don't think that plays. Okay, good. I'm just spitballing here, you know? I think We're because just... if that's the case, it, ha they have to, it has to be, uh, maybe. I mean, you have to, if you're showing a random episode to an audience, they have to know everything that's going on. It's like when you go, if you've, have you ever worked on a multi-camera review? Yes. You yeah. know, like before uh, episode six of season three, they show the live studio audience what happened in the previous episode. They don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Good call. I'll do anything right. you I'll I'm do wrong. anything you want though. Dude. You're I'll, right. I'm wrong. Thank you. I went too far. I went too far. <laughs> you know what? I feel like Gabriel right now. <laughs> You're here and I'm here. Yeah. Dude, this We're, is so wild. I know I've said this so many times. 
I don't know if I've painted the right picture. I've watched so much Suits. I've watched it full twice in eight months. I've seen it once before that. And I watch episodes just randomly all the time. I mean, I watch you guys all the time. This is so fun for me. Could we ever? You should have been on the show. You would have been so perfect I on know. the show. I was I 16 what a, what when a it missed came opportunity. out. That's true. You know what would be fun to do sometimes if we watch a thing and we have a question about something? It's like, call Rick Glassman. Oh, see like what he thinks. Checker? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what did he think of yeah. that scene? Like, if you and I are disagreeing or, you know, something about, like, a scene, be like, what did you think of that oh, moment when... I'll double the length of the episode. You'll have to trim it down, but I'm in. <laughs> Dude, anyway. Uh, Dude, pleasure. Thank yeah, you, you so much for having me on and having Sarah on. And, uh, you know, we, we, we're we huge fans of yours. So hopefully we can continue this conversation. You know, I, I didn't meet you, but I did. We were we were at, a, at the same wedding once. Can I tell you about that which or wedding? should I save that? Wait, which wedding? And it involved archery. No. Yeah. Adam, Adam and Katie? I think that's who it was. Oh. Yes, it was. Adam, Adam Shapiro, yes, Katie it was Lowe's? Sh 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 yeah, it was uh, Shap. The and Shapiro Lowe's wedding. Yeah, I, that's where I oh. met them. I was dating at the time Jackie Tone. I don't know if you know who she is. but Yes, of course. Oh, of course. Oh, wow. And, oh, my God. And that must have been after, right, because I, I had watched Suits already, and I, was a, I, I, I liked it, and I saw you. And this is also, I had just moved here, so, like, the idea of celebrity was like a novel thing to me at the time. And I remember I, I, I didn't even go up to you because I was like, I can't go up to somebody just because I know them or something. <laughs> We're at the same wedding, you know? Oh, man. Um, and then... I broke my toe. I broke my toe at that wedding. Why? Wow. How? I, was, I, danced, I danced too hard. How and why? Funny different hard. curiosities. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's well. Small world. All right. Well, now we've met. Okay. Well, I'm lingering. I like this. I'm you into go. This. You hang up and you call me whenever <laughs> you want. Lingering. And I love you. And this is fun. All right. Bye bye. I'm All right, lingering. guys. Have a good one. Enjoy Cheers. the rest of the chat. Bye. 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 You gotta hang bye. up. Uh, oh, I think he did it. Oh, okay. All right, should I unplug? Um. Oh my Come goodness. On. This is How so fun. Fun. How fun. That also, I I didn't. That wasn't in my mind at all when we were talking. Then then when, when once he said archery, I'm like arch. That wedding. Then it brought it all idea. back. Oh my gosh, I love that. I so. Do you want to hear this weird concern I have right now? It's not it's not my problem. Mm -hmm. How long have we been talking? How are you going to edit this? <laughs> it's a long episode, baby. It's going to be the. It's not going to be this long. It's going to. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll take some things out here and there, but not really. It's going to be a long one. Okay. I just put out a three-hour one. Oh, you did? Yeah. There, I I want minimum ninety minutes. They're usually between an hour and a half and two hours. Really? And then sometimes when we're feeling fun, I actually. Do you ever have snacks? Like in the middle. I ate right before you got here in case it went over two hours. But are you hungry? Do you want no, something? No, I ate before I got here. I just um, wanted to watch you cook me a meal. I, I had the chicken for you. That's right, right, right. right. Um, I think we could wrap it up, though. I mean, I like lingering. I like I like that you said that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that. Why do you I'm like lingering. it? I'm lingering. Because I called it out? Or so because nice. yeah. the word? There's something poetic about it, too. Because you called it out, just like I'm high maintenance, you called it out. I love that. I love that. But I also, the way you said it, you had, it was like really fun. A I'm little lingering. Rinse. Yeah, it was just, it was sassy. It was had some sauce on it. Well, good. Because what I was feeling was, oh, I'm, somebody is training for a job in a basement somewhere. And he called back as a favor. And I'm like, hold on, let me tell you about a wedding. But also I wanted to. <laughs> but it, you, it, it's kind of the basking vibe. You were able to bask. Well, because it was allowed. Because him and his co-star are such big fans of mine. I know, I can't. Gulp, gulp, I'm excited gulp. to see how that goes when he goes back and reports. I have, I pay for my Netflix for my family too. I'm that kind of guy. I know. Uh, um, so whatever. when I log in, I have to log in as me or my mom or whoever else is using it. And um, depending on where I am, I go between my account and my mom's account because this where it left off for where I'm watching Suits right now. And I'm, they go like this. And then they start oh. over so I could have two places where I'm watching where I'm watching like from the beginning I'm going through. And then when I want to watch a random season and I do that and I'm just like, I, I keep saying. Did it. it ever let you down? The show mm. never let you down. I don't know. But at the same time, I can't think of a show that really let me down. Did, were you excited when the game when we had Game of Thrones actors on our show? Because that's a crossover in your life. Yeah. And I also I also noticed that. Uh, that you guys, Game of Thrones was very big then, and you guys referenced it a little bit before you had 
Um, you had a few of them on. You had uh, what's her name? Conleth. Uh, that's that's who who the queen, right? Yes, so, the, no, Conleth is not the queen. The queen is. Don't see this. Is I'm worried about my brain today. I was nobody doing all, remembers names. Okay, I don't remember the names. And I've seen it a million times. Okay. Um, but, yeah, there's Kit Harrington's, you know, stepmom. Mm -hmm. Remember Kit Harrington? Uh, yeah, totally. And he was actually shooting something in Toronto at the same time that they were there. So and there was, was another a, one. There was another Game of Thrones person in it. Uh, so Conleth Hill. Oh, the bald guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the eunuch. The eunuch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then Max Beasley was in the same grouping of like the Brits that, but he was not on Game of Thrones, Max Beasley, but he was on The Gentleman. I don't know if you've watched that yet. I have not. It's really great. Um, yeah, that yeah was you know, uh, I will say spoiler alert, um, ish, something changes the last two seasons of the show. Um, when the thing changed, I'm just going to say it, spoiler alert, I'm saying it, uh, Patrick and Megan Markle, their characters let leave. Yeah, I don't. Do we have to worry about spoilers at all? I mean, it's been out for a long time. I hate when people do it. So okay, so, so you, I just—it's just out of respect. That's so nice. You just got to say it. Really thoughtful. If I know I'm going to watch something, I, I won't even watch the trailer. See, I don't mind a spoiler. Yeah, I'm women okay don't. With, is that a gendered thing? I, I'll and I'll speak for women. Okay, they do not mind spoilers the same as men. There are some things that I'm like. You have to, do you know, are you familiar with the show One Day? No. Oh God, it's a very emotional television show. It's One Day every year. If I'm going to watch it, then don't tell me, but go ahead if it's something. That's well, there was a thing that happened. I'm not going to tell you and I'm not going to tell your listener. There was a thing My that happened where I stopped. Burn me. Your podcast listener? Your uh, I was joking like, you said, like I have one listener. Oh, <laughs> that is not what I meant. Um, yeah. Well, then let me take um, these off. Um, and while you're there, you should take your shoes off. Um, what about was I saying? Oh, uh, one day. Okay, there was a thing. It felt like an emotional crescendo was happening. I stopped the television show. My husband has watched it before me. And I was like, you need to tell me. Yeah, right my now. mom does that. You need to tell me right now. No, because I can't take it. Uh -huh. I have to go and prepared. That's a woman thing. How? 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 I don't know. I say that only because like girls I've dated, my mom, you're telling me this. Uh, and I've never had a guy do that. So like my sample is pretty small. Mm -hmm. Like there's five women, six now, and then no guys. But look at me saying what I need. Yeah. Ooh, I said what I needed. Yeah. You know, now that you say it that way. It. Now that you say it that way, my, when my mom does it, my mom's just saying what she needs, which she's very good at. And then I go, uh, I'll be like, mom, we're going to find out soon. Mom, we don't know yet. Like if it's something that I haven't seen yet and my dad has, or they could guess, my mom would be like, is that such and such? And I want to say like, we can't talk about it. Like if somebody's seen it, we can't talk about it. But like my mom doesn't have the answer to something and we're not supposed to know yet. I, why don't we respect the storytellers? I don't know. Maybe that's a guy thing, but guys just respect storytellers differently than women. <laughs> is what I'm getting at. Um, that's but, interesting. But that's what we're talking spoiler. Oh, right. So when they when they left the last two seasons, I I it did let me down. Mm -hmm. And then I watched it, and I still miss them. Yes, of um, course. But I watched it. And I'm like, no, it's it's a it's when Steve Carell and also so many of the writers left on season seven. Uh, was it seven? I think so. Eight, nine, and oh, I'm forgetting now. Whatever. Whenever Steve left and the writers left, there were it was a funny show. Um, it wasn't the same show anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Suits wasn't the same show anymore. However, it was a not a different show, but kind of, and it worked. Vi like it was when I rewatch The Office. I a lot of times I stop when he leaves. Not always, but I often do. Suits, you watch it all. Well, that bodes really well for the next version of Suits, the Suits LA, right? Is, are like, anybody going? Tra not that over? I know of right now. No, I, I don't. I don't actually have any intel about it. I, it's a different world. It's a different place. It's different not time. New York. No, it's not New York. It's in LA. Oh. And I think it has a Hollywood component. I think I don't know. Is there a savant in it? I don't know. I'm actually not being cagey. I don't. Are you interested no. or you don't I'm very be, interested. No, and I've talked to extensive. No, I've actually talked to, <laughs> I don't want to be how many. I've talked to Aaron. Aaron is a very close friend. Talked to him extensively about it, but like in the minutiae. Is, minutia, he, is like, he running it? He's running it. Um, we've if he talked needs about, background actors. Yes. 
You should do it too. We should do a background day on it. Oh my gosh. Why not? Let's well, there's it. no reason why not. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, are you still doing the background acting when you can? Um, I have it in a bit, but oh, like if, if my friend is doing something in town, if somebody's doing something in town or I'm there, um, I, I will. I mean, I, I ask, I ask sometimes, um, I know, um, uh, I know some people who are on the new Superman, uh-huh. um, and, uh, even message with Superman himself a little bit. <laughs> and, uh, they were in Cleveland when I was there. I didn't ask. It's the only time I didn't ask because I'm not friends with them. I just know know them a little bit. Mm. Um, but I wanted to do it there. But I'll do background in anything, especially suits. Especially if you did it, that would be fun. And yeah, also, like, there's, you're not not featured. Just like, is that Donna? You know what I mean? Like that kind of shit's fun. I I remember it, when we were on suits. I remember specifically shooting a scene like in a bar and background was walking by, and I got and I do I get very distracted. I, mm-hmm. this is something that's getting worse for me as I get older. I get very interested in what everybody else is doing. So I'm like, Oh, look at, Oh, they're, Oh, Oh, are they, they cheersing a lot. No, just like they've been directed. Like these crosses are happening and I start to get really fascinated mm-hmm. and I start to watch and I'm like, the camera's on me, right? Like that's not a good thing. It doesn't oh, really well, work. All action has been called. Action's been called. Right. And then I'm like in the middle of playing a scene with you. And then the background workers, background actors are working and I'll just kind of get lost bad, in what Isn't they're that doing. Isn't that you kind of being present of just being like, you're just watching. The yeah, people. I mean, it's bad because it's probably going to mess up the director and not going to make their day. Like they have to cut and we have to cut and start over. But that definitely happens to me for sure. And um, one time, a, a few times it happened to me. There was one particular season where I was like, oh, oh, I wore that dress. <laughs> I wore that dress. Like I was like, I remember having that dress on and I was seeing multiple dresses like, go by. And then I got so into looking at the dresses yeah. that I was like, I and I think they may have had to be like, try not to have people wearing the dresses because it really distracts her. Cause I get interested in the dress. Just, so they, like, they have like a, like new directors come in. So here's some of the stuff to keep Donna or keep Sarah <laughs> from like not doing this. Um, I will probably want to take you up on this. Um, on, on what? Which when thing? production is happening. If, like I might message you and be like, "Hey, you want to reach out to Aaron and see if we could like just be in the Go background that, somewhere?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it. it yes. Out for at least in in your show, the exteriors. I'm sure that happened a bit, but mostly there were interiors in which background were going to be reoccurring. Like there's people that work in the office or something. So we yes. probably couldn't do that. We but. had on suits. We had the best background people, and they stayed with us like our crew yeah. for most of the time. It was nice, consistent work too. I bet they like that. They know where they're going. They know everybody. And it was it made, it made the whole place have a life, right? Because you know these people. Yeah, because yeah. you're like these are our friends, and this is this is these are my characters' friends or the characters that they're playing. It was so great. Yeah, it was really great. I'm sorry we didn't call your mom. Do you call your mom a lot? I do. I call my parents a lot. I'll call my dad real quick. Um, Why are you picking your dad over your mom? Because uh, my. Uh, my mom watches the show when we watch it. My dad watched the show. Okay. Like my mom. My mom is. My mom has. Um, if my mom has seen thirty episodes, maybe. Oh. We okay, can call okay. them both. But like, like I called my dad. The real cold open of this is going to be me calling my dad, saying, "Guess who I'm having on." Okay. Okay. Hello. Could you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Could you hear uh, Donna? Okay. Hi. <laughs> Uh, the Donna. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sir. To who, who? What is your father's Steve. name? Steve. 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 Dad. Yeah. St- Steve. This is Sarah. Hi, Hello, Steve. Sarah. Hi. And, and I, I, I don't believe in pipe casting, Sarah, but you're one of my heroes and all my friends. And I'm so glad you're doing the podcast. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Steve. Well, being able to spend a few hours with your lovely son is an absolute delight and totally my pleasure. You did a great job on this parenting See? thing. Thank, what are your thank secrets? you very much. We're very proud of him. I, don't, I have no secrets except let them do what they want to do. You know what I love? Because I have a I have a 16 year old and I'm pre grieving her exit to uh, college, which will occur in two years. In two years time, she will be in college somewhere. Right. What I love is that your son in the time, you know, we just met today, but he has shared with me 
how much he loves to go home and how often he likes to go home and how much he loves home and how he much, and it's not the place, it's the people. And I just, I want to be that place. What's the secret? Yeah. How do you get your kids to always want to come home? You got nine seasons, it, it, baby. It, it doesn't matter. It, it, it's more Ricky and how much we love him and how much we're all, we're very sentimental and emotional, all of us. And by the way, Sarah, when he comes home, he comes home sometimes for four weeks at a time, and we have to watch all seven seasons every time. <laughs> he thinks seven. <laughs> when Mike leaves, he's out. Yeah, you're out when Mike leaves. You know, there's two secret more seasons that you could do. I'll come back home, and we can just probably, we could probably bang those out in a week or two. She, we, yeah. called, we called Patrick, uh, who, who plays Mike Ross. We talked right, to him on the right. phone. And uh, <laughs> he's like, and, and uh, according to Sarah, but, you know, I'm going to believe it for a little bit. When she told him that he was coming on the podcast, he's like, that's like one of the cool guy podcasts. He knows the podcast. That's awesome. We no, know he him. Said, what he are you doing us. on that thing? And that's a cool kid podcast. Like, I can't believe it. I can't believe he's having you. <laughs> this is so much fun. You're the best. I wish you the most more success. Are you in the, are you in the next? Is there a new one coming out? There's a new a one new coming out. We are not, uh, as of now, we're not on that next one. But I'm. we did launch yesterday a podcast about our television show. So, Steve, I'm hoping yeah. that you could uh, you could tune into I'll our podcast. and maybe you and could like, call I, in. Yep. I know how to do it. I, I will be happy no, to. No, it's all not my on friends. YouTube yet. So you don't know how to do it. He only knows the YouTube. I'll figure it out. I'm sure you'll give me prompts. Yeah. Yeah. We right. Actually, Patrick made a video from my mom and everybody's mom. So we can give it to Steve. <laughs> And also, it's it's you know it's it's really up in the air at this point. But there's been some rumbles and grumbles in this living room that uh, uh, when they do suits L.A. that Sarah and I will do background work on it one day. <laughs> and just Donna will be in the background. How's Debbie? How's Debbie doing? Debbie's doing fine. Thank you very much. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Your this, mom called right? me, sweetie. I they're, gotta go oh yeah. visit. They're Can on my pod. They come on my podcast a lot. When they're next in town, uh, I'm gonna uh, invite you back over if you're free, and I would love to do one of them with all of us. I would. Yes, that would be awesome. That would be fun. Yes. Oh my gosh, that would be such a treat. Could we all? We could, and Alvin could sit on our laps, and we could just <laughs> be together. We could drink the. It's it's drinks? so funny hearing your voice. Yeah, you know I mean, I know you're Sarah, but to me, you're Donna. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. My wife loves your wardrobe in the oh show. <laughs> oh, I could wear something that was Donna's. I could bring something for <laughs> Debbie to wear. <laughs> oh, I love her hair. Even when we love broken? you, and it's a pleasure that you're on Ricky's podcast and that you can appreciate him because he's a very special person. He's a delight. Thanks, Daddy. I'm so lucky. Yes. Yeah. Love right. you, Ray. So Thanks, lovely Sarah. to meet Best you. Best of luck. Thanks for calling. Thanks for all your support. Dad, anything Thank you, you want to plug? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> not at all. I'm just happy project. to talk to her. All this right. has been great. Thanks for calling. Love you. All right, love bye. you. Bye. Oh, man, this is fun. This oh, my God, they are amazing. You have no idea. This is, your mom just like, hi, sweetie. Yeah, but. She would, I bet she would make me a meal. Would she make <laughs> me a meal? <laughs> if you said that, one? my dad would have laughed so hard just now. No, she wouldn't. She doesn't cook. <laughs> But she she would welcome me as if I bet the house smells good. She just gives yeah. that warm that that the house warm, smells good. You know, this that is so cool me. that you just talked to my parents. It was it, such an honor. Um, Feels so lucky. When when they're in town again, I'm gonna. I, I think it would make for a good episode. Look how excited he is. Look at his schwanz. Oh, does he have lipstick? Yeah, yeah, it's out there now. <laughs> um, all right, um, I'm leaving town. And I have a lot to do, and I okay. have to end this now. Okay. Um, you are uh, welcome at any time, with or without my parents. Uh, I have people come back on the podcast all the time. You do? I would love to have you on whenever with just you. If Patrick wants to come on, if you want to come on with one of my friends, this has been fun. So thank you very much, and it was thank so nice you. meeting you. It was so nice meeting you. Thank you. You were so generous. Thank you so much. Um. It the, just expanded my world the in link such a lovely way. To to uh, a sidebar we'll have in the description. Yes, it's every Tuesday wherever um, you get your podcasts. Sidebar. And if YouTube is up by the time this comes out, we'll have a link there too. Ooh, fun. And uh, okay, is there anything else? Is there anything you want to mention or your social? What's your Instagram name? I am Sarah G. Rafferty. Sarah G. Rafferty was taken. Correct. All this, uh, lots of ways of doing my name. Sarah were taken. G. Rafferty was taken. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Sarah Rafferty was taken. S. Rafferty, I think, was taken. Whatever. I was late to the. I was late to the party. Yeah. I know. I am Sarah G. Rafferty. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's okay. 
Cool. <laughs> I like this podcast a lot. I had such a nice time with you. Thank you. I had such a nice time with you. Thank you for having me. I'm going to take a poll right of you. Okay. Um, and then... Uh, Do Can I push music. this away? Push it away. Theme music. Theme music. Um, wow. What thank a you fun so... connected. This was so nice. Thank you so much for inviting me for so long and sharing yourself. With How long did we go? Generous. What time did we start? It's just like 2.45, 2 hours, 45 minutes, I think. Scoot. Just get like, like literally eat the fucking mic, like full on, get right up in there. See the man, see the man who wants yes, to stay. Yes, that's the sound. Meal. Yeah. Okay. See the man who wants to stay for your meal, giving up a piece of pie for your wife. Everybody want to know how it feel. Everybody want to see what it's like. Even eat a bean pie, I don't mind. Me and Missy, Mickey, Mickey, Missy, Missy, Mickey, mine. All right. I step back, I wanna dance. Oh, the greenback boogie. I mean, that's it. Let's hear Let's listen to it on the speaker. I think it sounds great. Blabbity blue. Scoop D. Oh, yeah.